broadcast at WJFK FM, Manassas, Washington, D.C. Who are you and where are you calling from? My name is Richard. I'm calling from Staten Island. Okay, Richard. Your contribution? My contribution was I just wanted to, I was hoping to get on with a couple of people because I had an opinion question that I wanted to pose that I thought maybe a couple of people could interact with. Okay, Richard. Hold on right there. Okay. I'm going to let you guys, Richard, you go ahead and let's see what happens. Okay. Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, my question is how everybody would feel about the Don and Mike show returning to New York airwaves. Uh, all, right, all right, here we go. And how would you feel about that? Now, wait a minute. No, I want to find the pig. I want to find the pig that's burping. The pig gave birth to you, duh. Okay, now, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, if you could just stop burping long enough to have some discourse here. Okay. I'd like to ask you a question or two. Okay. Richard, uh -huh. what is the significance of coming on a radio show with lots of people listening parading yourself as a person with a reasonable level of intelligence and then burping into the telephone. You just answered the question. In your, in your question of what's the significance of parading myself in front of tens of people that are listening to your show, well, that, well, that's the reason. I am an idiot that likes to draw attention to himself. Okay. Well, Richard, I want to thank you for your honesty. Uh, all right. And I really want to thank Richard for having the and testicle fortitude to stay and answer the question. I really mean it. It's the Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Oh, man, what are they wearing? Are they wearing Redskins jerseys? These are the guys from the network. Oh, that's right, we're not on the network today. Oh, that's after, after yesterday, that's right. In a true story, he was a neo-Nazi. They're his friends. True enemy. Himself, a man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. If we're not on the network, you know what I'd call their visit? What? A colossal waste of time. Ha -ha. Hi, Joe. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Hot Dog. And all the ships at sea. Hot Dog. Lovely, because they rinse and repeat. Don Geronimo and I wish somebody had uh, my copy, my uh, my crashed up copy of I Think We're Alone Now. <laughs> I'd even I'd even settle for the Tiffany version. Uh, no, Tiffany, no, you wouldn't. You hate Tiffany. I know. You don't have to give me the Tommy James, but somebody could find that. I, it, it's the Don and Mike Show. Oh. 106.7 WJFK at 310. And uh, here is our drummer, Anton. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi, Buzz. Is anyone missing? Hey, what happened? Shut up. Did you wash your ass today? Someone called for a doctor? Welcome to our lives on 106.7 WJFK. Yeah. Our phone number 877-365-3636. Oh, I didn't do all the usual stuff. It's a Thursday. Thursday! Thursday, September 11th. Right. And we're in a weird limbo that we will move uh, <laughs> directly past and uh, full steam ahead okay. into this radio show. Limbo lower now. Heard on... WJFK, 106.7, mm -hmm. like we thought it would be all along. Right. And I guess today, for the, the people of the other cities, now I feel like Smoky Rivers. <laughs> yeah, there, if, you, you, if there's you no need to say anything to the other cities. If you're having trouble receiving WAVA, <laughs> please let us know, even though this is on the radio, and if you can't hear us, you can't hear us. Duh. <laughs> no, but uh, we've been told that they're running a tape of us on the Westwood One Network, which I guess... They can do, right? They uh, have that contractual right to do that, and uh, they can do do with it as they please. Here we are, though, together again, yes. alone again. Here we are, just us and you guys on WJFK. Yes. And throughout all of this, what this means, at least... Well, and Mike and I don't know what's going to happen with the with the other side. Here's Charles. Charlie Broyhill. Ah. You're not alone. Mm. By Chicago? Well, that's true. It was Chicago 19... But, no, you're not alone. You were saying, I think we're alone now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're on the network. Well, that's weird. What I just got a call from an affiliate who said, you're on live today. Well, no, uh, but I heard a guy right before we went on that... Uh, I'll ask. I'll ask. We'll find out. We'll find out right now. Hmm. 
We'll find out for you. You could ask any of them. Hello, those. I, I will right now. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hi, you are on in Rochester, New York. Hmm. What's the station? Uh, WHDK, Hot Talk 1280. Thanks. Hey, Don and Mike show. Hey, what's up, what's up, man? Let me tell them from Sacramento. This is Skip. <laughs> All right, thanks. We'll are, right, we, we'll, are we on in Sacramento? We'll be right back. This fall, David e. Kelly takes you to a place a few miles from normal. Good afternoon, sir. My wife said this place will make me feel ten years younger. How's this work? Well, we use traditional acupuncture combined with an incense made from ground-up yak bones to, you know, realign your chakras and draw the energies of the universe back into your body. Good thing it's not this difficult for your car. Thanks to Castrol GTX High Mileage, you get an oil designed for cars with more than 75,000 miles. Do you really? It protects against oil burn-off better than other leading motor oil. That sounds great. So give your car Castrol GTX High Mileage. I do. The oil that helps older cars feel young again. Wow, I spilled my beverage. You did. 317 on WJFK. You know, we desperately, we are going to move past this. I promise you this. Mm -hmm. It's crazy time. We, it's a crazy time. We desperately want to move past all of this. But, <laughs> you know, the the JFs, the, the jerk faces, uh, they say, okay, you're not going to be on the network today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're like, okay, we, we'll deal with that. That's fine. And, true and, and, before. and yeah, and, and Buzz, there, therein lies the problem. That apparently... Westwood One called some of the radio stations and said they were unable to come to some type of agreement with us. Apparently the affiliates are the reason. That yeah. The affiliates wanted oh. a live show. Your, your stations and your different markets wanted a live show, and they're going to get a live show the way we're going to do it, the way we said we were going to do it. And, and we're not doing this to, to F anybody. No, we're not. We're just doing what we were, we were going to do. We were told today when we came in, and these discussions are above our heads with lawyers, yes. go in today and do a show for 106.7 WJFK. Don't worry about timing out your breaks. Don't worry about... You know, go in and have fun. Yeah, and they said that uh, they'll run a best of show on the network. They're not doing that. I, I guess many affiliates are getting the show live today, and uh, so it'll be a bumpy road. That's going to be. It'll be interesting, but uh, just hold on tight. So anyway, <laughs> all right, we're not alone, but uh, as far as we know, and all we know is what we've told you. <laughs> via, via fax and via telephone call, as far as we know. We are on WJFK. And here's the deal. We will, uh, once again, let everybody know here in Washington, and if anyone else happens to be eavesdropping, we will uh, we'll let you all know what's going on as soon as we do. Sucks. It's just silly. It, it, it's... <laughs> It's funny. It's a major corporation. It, it, it's, it's a so, major award. It's a major award. Fragile. Fragile. A Christmas story. Okay, let's move uh, past. Let's move past this. Although I got to tell you, I'm thrown for a loop by it. I'm really, I am too. I'm yeah. amazed. I'm really thrown for a loop. You, and trust me, I, I, I am. You know, and you gotta I, love. Do you love email? Do you love the email? Isn't the email, you know, the email in its own way, one of the worst things that's ever happened to communication? I, I feel the empathy with you guys going, oh, this, not this again. But understand, we had conversations today with all of these people, and they finally said, you know, we're just going to put it in the, on the For back. For today, we're going to put you on best of. And we said, fine, and we got ready, WJFK, no problem. We get calls from affiliates, and you know what? It, it, look, it, you know what it says to me? Here, Here's the deal. If the affiliates are so hot to trot to have a live show that they don't care that, that uh, you know, the formatics for today are going to be a little screwed up, Yeah. then that's fine. And, and, and that's the, that is the way it was just explained to us during that commercial break. By our brilliant agent. By our brilliant and ballsy agent. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, Buzz, it's really hard when you hang up the phone with a guy who's representing you. Yes. And we were both on the telephone. We've done it. I really looked, both looked at each other like we were dogs hearing high-pitched whistles. <laughs> well, we we said, what was that? Now, we didn't call him. No. He called us. Really? And for all he knew, we were going to be on the air when he called to say, oh, yeah, incidentally, they just called me. You're on the network today. <laughs> Emailed him, Don. Oh, yeah. They Not called him. Emailed him. Right. They emailed him to tell him that. Reason given? They didn't want a best of show. They wanted a live show. The affiliates mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Too many affiliates wanted a live show. And, you know, it's, it's and I, you know, there's a part of me that does not. I, that is not necessarily a bad thing. No, and they said, yes, the show is going to be screwed up. He said, well, we want your show screwed up. That's great. That's, that's the message we got today. Okay, it's 327 on WJFK. <laughs> but it, legally and contractually, we are, you know, I guess we're being pirated today. <laughs> no, we're not, though. Because they can do this. Yes, but but against 
It, Mike, it, it's not rape. It's against our wishes. It's not rape. It's it's. <laughs> what is it, Don? It's non-consensual <laughs> sex. It's, it's, it's not rape. Yeah. Today on the network, I think that's a safe way of putting it. We both. We are having non-consensual sex. We went. We went to the motel together. Yes, right. We did. Okay, we kind of knew what was going on. Right. And now. Oh God. They've copied us. <laughs> now <laughs> we've gone to. Now now we realize. It's spun out of control. Yes. We're being probed where food comes out. We want our dress back. <laughs> well, we're going to have fun anyway. My God, someone should call the Colorado district attorney and tell him that two more victims willing to stand up now and testify. <laughs> the awful things. Consensual sex. It was yes. okay when we got into the room. Yeah. Yeah. It was even okay when we were doing it regular style. <laughs> At 3.03 today, we were violated. We were. So anyway, hi. We'll let you know when we know once again. It's back, right back to where it was. Hi. And welcome to the show. So uh, not only is this obviously wreaking havoc on us and, and on our radio show, although we really plan for the things to go smoothly today, one of the good things about being just on WJFK is that we don't have to run the commercials at 9 minutes and 40 seconds every single time. Cool. That's one great thing about doing local as opposed to doing national where you have these set breaks. So what this means is we had a couple of commercials we played at the beginning of the show today. How many yeah. did you play last time? Uh, I don't even know. You don't even know? Because we were on the phone the whole time with our agent. But we've certainly played a lot of commercials oh, in the first the, half hour of the show. There's one good thing about WJFK. There's plenty more. Yes. <laughs> there's plenty Rest more. Rest assured yes. that the fact that we are now doing a local show for you that's being heard on the network. This is, this is so stupid. Now, if we want to, though, yeah. because we've gotten a lot of these commercials out of the way. Exactly. Now, if we say we'll be back in a minute, I, I mean, literally, we might be back in a minute. Yeah. Literally, we might. Right. We might. Well, we, we never said we'd be back in a minute, even when we were on the network. Right? Yeah, but if you say we'll be right back after this quick break. Well, you mean you might come back in a minute. Right. That actually, if you if you go with the commercial break. <laughs> well, you you want to go to that news format now? <laughs> Traffic and weather on the eight, so then we take 60 no, seconds. Here's breaks. Chuck again. You're off the network. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking me. No, there's a best of that is airing, and if you bring up BTS, whatever that is, Probably. you'll be able to hear it. That's, that's the important thing, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know, the rest followed, and that's why I we've hear had your voice so many, so many wonderful. Is that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just tell you, you, you know, I. I like me, hate me, I tell you how I try to prepare our show every day. I write notes. Mm -hmm. I got it written all over here. Stay away from network. Yes. <laughs> I, I swear. You I'm tried. Not, and I tried. swear I've written down network, no. <laughs> no discuss network. Mm -hmm. How can you avoid the train wreck that is happening right now in front of our eyes? Well, I don't know what to believe. I'm in, I'm in a state of shock. I don't know what to believe. I'm confused. We, we were on, and then we were off, and then we were on, and we were off again. You're off right now. And I bet, we're, I bet we were off because we went to commercials. That's, I would assume that's Are when it happened. Or, or, or did they come back after we, after we played the commercials? That I don't know. I just, somebody came in and said, <laughs> well, 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 let's take some phone calls to know if we're really off. Okay. <laughs> God. Well, you, know, you were back there taking yeah, phone calls. Yeah. That's how you found out. Hello, no, Don. somebody here came in and told me, but we have Don a my feed here. Hello. No! Hello? Yeah, we're off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello, Don oh, Mike. Oh, what a J tangled web. JFK, hello. Hey, JFK. Hi. Did you did the boys walk out or what? No, the, no. Oh, no, no, no. no. See, we're here. We're the boys. Oh, what are you oh you're there. You're there. They're playing a the tape now. Did they answer me? The, answer me these questions three. Okay. What is your given name? Peter. What is the town you're calling from? Uh, I'm out on uh, Highway 50 right now, running through the Central Valley out in California. Okay, all right, thank you. Now, when, when we went to commercials abruptly on our network, when, when, they, when the commercials were over, or when we went to commercials there, when they came back, were we still on, or did they have a tape on? Uh, they're running a tape right now. How, how did it come back on? I mean, when did they switch to... When, did you hear us talking live, and then they just dumped out of us, or did they come back from a commercial break with something new? Uh, they came back from the commercial break with uh, with the tape. You guys, uh, the last thing we heard is, uh, we'll be right back. And I thought that was a lot better way to sign off the network than some weepy David Gates. Ah! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to some, I'm gonna try and find some way to get, to get somebody I know in D.C. to set their radio up. Wow. By a computer, so I can listen to it over my computer. <laughs> well, that that would be very hard to do because we're not able to be heard on the computer. But hold on, I'll just leave you on hold for a second. And okay. of course, the next time we do call commercials, I'll call our agent again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And find out 
what the hell's going on. Yeah. Right. He's on the he's on the pulse. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I think we're alone now. Hi, everybody. Yes, we are. It would be great if we had that song, if somebody had found that song by now. This is, you know, it, it, I mean, sometimes we go behind the scenes in radio. Sometimes we turn the radio around so you can see. But now what we've done is we've actually we've screwed off the back panel. <laughs> now you're, now right. you're, you're just seeing everything. What you're getting today, Frank. You're seeing like, the wires, the electrodes, the capacitors. You know what you're getting on today's show on WJFK? You are getting the essence of why this type of radio will always come to you free. You're getting why you'll never be charged for this type of junk. Amen, brother. What we're doing. This is not even the semblance of a radio show today. No. It's not. But the good news is you're getting it for free. And, and I hope that there are people listening right now that are as amused as we are by this. Because these if most recent developments uh, I give you don't laugh. have cemented. If you don't laugh. You cry. You pound, you pound, you pound beers, you pound your fist. Yeah, I'll be doing that. You pound. So, I guess I take back all of those uh, positive things. And your lid is awfully messed up, too. Yeah, your, your, your lid on your beverage is, is totally screwed up. <laughs> you like to have it brim full, don't you? That's I a do. thing you, you have. Yeah, do you mind that? But I, no, I just didn't, I just noticed it. Fill my beverage. I do it all the time. You're filling it to the brim. I, I just, I certain things I noticed, I think I noticed it because the lid was a little messed up. Mmm. Ah, sweet elixir. How much fluid is in there? This would be um, 44, 44 kidney-bursting ounces of liquid, <laughs> Lord, known as diet vanilla coke, which Very I'm good. sure someday will do something awful to me, but I don't care. There you go. All right, now, now if, we, if we take phone calls, I can see right here on the on on this main bank here that a lot of these calls are coming from out of area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I would imagine they might be a little upset. Let's try one that appears to be in area. Uh, hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Because, God, all those other people in those cities now, I bet they think, hey, that, I bet they think we just pussied out and walked out. I know, and I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're here. We're on the radio. How crazy is this? Hi there. Yeah, you're on JFK. Hi, Hi Don. I'm calling you from Kent Island. Can you at least feed it to Baltimore so I can receive you a little better? Oh, Kent Island, that's tough to get us down there. Can't feed it. Uh, well, listen, it's, it's tough to get WJFK and Laurel. Forget Kent Island. I lived on Kent Island. I know. I live in Davidsonville, and I put a special antenna on my roof so I could get JFK. Well, get back to Davidsonville. You'll hear it better. <laughs> I know. No, I'm Davidson, on my way. Davidsonville, be be honest. Keep, I mean, come closer. Come closer to the Beltway. We're You'll really... be able to get us in Davidsonville. Um, yeah. It's, it'll, be a little, it. it'll be a little in and out. It's uh, it's like some girl's underpants. It's spotty. Yeah, yeah uh, very spotty uh, in that area. Really, I, but, I know from driving myself many times. Once you actually get to the Bay Bridge, yeah. you know that's forget it. The red, white, and blue. You start losing it seriously about Route 97. I'm going over the bridge now. Well, then you're going to be going any second. Uh, my unofficial. Well, he's coming back right. over the bridge. Are you going Bye. over the bridge to the Kent Island? Or are you coming back from from the eastern shore? He's gone. He's uh, well. We'll never know. <laughs> We've lost him. That's because he's on that pesky bridge. That that bridge that scares me now. When I go, you know, I went over that bridge uh, be, during the vacation. You go over it all the time. Don't be one of those. What people. the hell is the deal with that bridge? Don't be one of those people, Mike. I know one of those people, and I'm not going to mention this person's name for fear of public ridicule. You, some of you know this person, but this person is so flipped out by the Chesapeake Bay Bridge that when this person gender I will not reveal, but when this person gets to the Bay Bridge, the, he, she is one of those people that goes to the little ranger shack. Has a drive over. And has to wait 30 minutes to get a cop or, or one of the park police or whatever they are at the Bay Bridge wow. to actually drive her, oh, excuse me, or him over the bridge. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And that is, and apparently lots of people take them up on that. They have, I think, one of the most used drive over programs uh for any bridge Never and, heard of that. yeah there there are people that will huh. drive you over wow. and, and you haven't seen those big signs? that old span of the that bridge that big sign that says you know where it's a big flash that says pay toll it's ahead then it right. says you know easy pass left lane uh -huh. and then it says uh, exact change here and then it's right. big giant pussy <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that <laughs> three right lanes if you're afraid to drive the 4 mile span wow. and i hate it when people break when they get to the top of the bridge which always seems to happen why is that why is people get to like 
like mid span, like at the highest point, the point where you would be, you know, tuna fish if you uh, fell off the bridge. Well, and that's, that's when they break. That's when they. That's that's where. And Mike, I'm so glad that you and I share the gift of advanced athletic, and not only athletic, but but up, up here, here in intellectual yeah. ability. Yeah. That when we get to that top spot, right. you go, we can look at it and process it and go, oh, there's water. There's water. Mm-hmm. We don't actually have to. Drive slower and go. We are high. Now, now, of course, we are up high now. Of course, in many other opposite situations, we're we're dumb off the scale. Right. But in that one, we've got it, and that's that's what causes it is people that get up there and they go, "Golly, look at this!" Freak down. Do you believe? No, not not just the they're in down. awe. Yeah, yeah, just go. Yeah. Do you believe this? Meanwhile, the speed goes from from forty five to thirty five to twenty. It's, it yeah. could be worse. The Bay Bridge is fine. Yeah, it could be the Bucksport Bridge in Bucksport, Maine, which really is the scariest bridge I have ever gone. We're talking driving over potholes where you see the metal, Whoa. the rusted metal reinforcement in the concrete. <laughs> that's that's pretty nasty uh, when you're going over a bridge and you see I'd that. I'd be concerned. Uh, listen, it's uh, 332 on WJFK 106.7. You don't have to say that as much now. Well, I, no, I would now though. Would you? I, if we were tr- if we were local, and who knows, we may end up being local here on WJFK. I will say no. We got to say 106.7. Here on 106.7 WJFK. You don't even have to say the WJFK. Here, well, you just said 106.7. I know. It's you optional. just said you didn't even say the 106.7. You just said WJFK. It's optional. Well, you shouldn't really be saying the call letters at all. Why? Okay, we're going to get back to that. We're really regressing, aren't we now? We're going local, and now I have to not say anything. No, you can say I'd anything like you say like. some of the formatic. You can say anything you like. But... I'd like to give a weather forecast once in a while. Hey, out in the burbs, partly cloudy. There you go. <laughs> I, 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 partly cloudy. I'm all right, I'll <laughs> share if you'd like. No, don't start that. Then you'll do the whole thing where, you know, I don't want to go down that Don't road. you remember the beginning? We won't, be, we won't be traveling that highway anymore. Don't you remember the beginning, the way it was set up, where you read everything? Everything mm-hmm. that, like, all of this junk that we give away and stuff, you would read it all? Did I read it all? You did, when we first started. And then it was determined that I had a learning disability? <laughs> no, that, you didn't like doing it. Oh. You didn't like doing it. Yeah. Mike, what have they won? You know, you, I don't know. Yeah, you, you, I, yeah, I, just, sometimes, I couldn't process it. Sometimes, there would, you, like, they took it away from me because I was too stupid. No. That's no, what no, it no. was. No, no, no. You're gifted. You're, you're gifted. I'm gifted. I'm a gifted child, like an autistic child. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. 97. Bang. Raymond, so, Raymond, you, Raymond. Uh, rock and roll. 334 on 106.7. Huh? And, and today is, uh, we're not going to make a big deal about this either on purpose 9-11. Yeah. Uh, although uh, a couple of people in, inside the radio biz, I think everybody's uh, thought about it. Yeah, we're telling me that you know you should you should do a very reverent show today. Uh, perhaps someone said replay the show we did at the Pentagon last year. No, and didn't see the didn't see the need. Don't mean mm. any disrespect. It's just... I go with that public service announcement that I mentioned uh, earlier in the week, which says. Uh, they want. They threaten our our way of life. They want to destroy our way of life. I believe that. That's what those people that uh, flew into the the towers did. And the best way to fight them is to live our lives and live our lives the way we do it and do a show that hopefully will be fun and, and will amuse you and, and that's it. And we'll we try desperately to entertain you and, and do a show that <laughs> that you will have more twists and turns in the first thirty minutes of live radio yes. than you've had in the last ten years. I, I certainly hope there are people that were entertained by that. I hope. But I, I think, you know, I, the, you know the reason I thought about it today? I thought about it today because eerily it is, it, it's an, a remarkably similar day weather-wise to, to what it was uh, two years ago. You know why I thought about it? Why is that? Because it's on Channel 4, 5, 7, 9, they, they were hammering you with it? 11, 13, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. It was on everything today. Right. It was on everything. And thank God it... it uh, at 9 o'clock, Channel 7 came to their senses, and there was big 73-year-old Regis. <laughs> I originally found, found out Regis is 73, and I wow. have... 73 years young. I have to say, for 73, that old dude is getting it done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really think about it. <laughs> Regis Philbin is 73 <laughs> freaking years old. Remember we were talking the other day? He's already on devil's time. Right. <laughs> he, he's, you know, 70's the cutoff. Yeah, he's in that 10-year period. <laughs> right. He's got seven years left to live. 
At best. But he's a performer, and those performers tend to live longer. Well, I don't know. You know, it, it, uh, I guess it depends. Uh, yeah. would, it depends. Would you, yeah, with him, it does. <laughs> would you consider what he does performing? People would say, do you consider what we do performing? No, which is why our life expectancy is not going to rise because we're performing. No. No, we, are, we have a shorter life existence, uh, existency than most of you do. Expectancy. Expectancy. <laughs> existency. Existence. I like that. You try to do this. <laughs> you out there. You come in, and you talk, you talk to some dumbass jerk face agent who's supposed to be representing you who says, I've got it all worked. Out. Well, the word that comes to mind uh, with that conversation was decisive. <laughs> and then, uh, then you find out it's another way, and then he calls you up on the air during the show and says, well, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. You know, the instructions he was giving us were, I, I, I was, were, were the legal equivalent of, you're on your own. <laughs> yep. You know that, don't you? <laughs> That's he, right. He was using language specifically designed. <laughs> so if we came back to him later... Say, I didn't yeah. say that. I didn't tell you to do that. That's what they do. I didn't tell you to do that. Yeah, they that. do. Yeah. They do. Worms. 337. 1067. You want to say it? Go ahead. WJFK. Hello, Don and Mike Show. JFK. That was nice. Thank you, Rob. Hello. <laughs> Rob, I'm going to the 202 number here. See if we get any Let's luck. Let's go to there. the Washington line. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike. Yeah, um, I don't know what you're talking about right now. If you're live or not, I'm hearing about the secret sound. Nope. If you're... Yes, yes, we're live. Yes, you're caller 100. Would you like to hazard a guess? All right, uh, you're you're probably on tape right now. Then is what oh, I'm just trying no, to no, get no, it. No, we're on the delay. What's your name? My name is Greg. Greg, where are you from? Reno, Nevada. Reno. Great. Um... Yeah, about five minutes into the show, I heard you say something about Sacramento was live. All right, here you go. Are you ready? Yeah. Identify the sound and win. Are you ready? Sure. Good luck. Ha! Ha! What is the <laughs> what is the sound? That's you laughing at us for being on the air nationally. No, no, I'm sorry, that's no. incorrect. Try again next time. Cool. Would but you, you are live right now unless you, unless they just went to tape during the five minutes that after your first start out. Alright, you want it, you want another shot of this from Reno? Sure. Alright, here's the secret sound. What is this? Congratulations. This is Max Bear Jr., Jethro Bodine from the Beverly Hillbillies, and you just won the CBS Celebrity Burp Contest. What do you think of that? That's cool. What is that? That's Jethro Bodine. Ah. So do you have a radio handy? Yeah. I'm going to let you turn it up and listen to yourself right now. And listen, we're going to hang up now, but listen to the prize we're sending you. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm, bye. Bye-bye. Wow. <laughs> so how long do you think he's going to be sitting in front of his radio waiting to hear himself? I don't know. Good long, good long time, but the good news is his prize is already on his front porch. On his front porch, and it didn't take him long at all to hang up that phone. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Oh, hey. Gun sight? Hello, JFK. <laughs> hey, I'm driving from uh, from Baltimore to uh, to Washington, flipping back between 105 you guys and, and, and uh, WJFK, and you're on tape in Baltimore. And I'm listening to you live now on 106. All right, thank you. Okay, good thanks job. For the, thanks for that update. Thank work. you. Thank you. I said thank you. Sir, what's your... How e about it? You're welcome. What's your EBE on this trip? <laughs> what's EBE? Eating boogers. Well, no, it would be EBA. What's the EBA? I'd like... Uh, well, your estimated... Uh, or ENB. Estimated number of... Uh, ENBE. Estimated number of boogers eaten. During his commute. E A E A O B. E Estimated amount of boogers eaten. And then uh, having that information, we can do the BPM, which is boogers per minute. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. Welcome to a very silly 106.7. <laughs> very special Don and Mike Show. Hello, JFK. Come on now. Hello. Hey, Don. Yes, we, we're here. Hey. You're, you're calling on the on the local WJFK line. Go ahead. Uh. How you doing? Hey, Buzz. Hey. Hey, Buzz. Yes, hi. I'm, I'm on my beach towel, Buzz. I was wondering if, if maybe you could put that, that bra back on for me. N not not right now, sir. I thank you. I could maybe make some uh, Buzz butter for you. You'll just have to use your imagination. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Come, uh, come on, Buzz. <laughs> Thanks to know, Buzz. Go on, go on friend. <laughs> Thanks to know when we go to the local callers. Yeah, yeah, there's always that love for you. Yeah. Somebody's making Buzz butter. <laughs> 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 Buzz Batter from from the gay. I'm guessing the guy was gay community. Hello, Buzzy Don. Batter. Don and Mike. Don. Yeah, and Mike. Hi. Let's talk about some football, buddy. Let's get on some real subjects here. Okay, I tell you what. Why, why don't you start, Go, What do you want to talk about? 
Let's talk about... We'll be right back on JFK. <laughs> if you have trouble sleeping due to low back pain, nighttime heartburn, swelling of the legs, or minor aches and pains from muscular fatigue or overexertion... See, look at that. That wasn't very many commercials at all on WJFK. Hi. How'd it go? And, and nobody's home. You got voicemail? Both. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Oh, my WJFK. There we are. Did I not clearly explain the circle of trust to you, Greg? Uh, yeah, I think I got it. Then is there something you want to tell me? Mm, I... I don't think so. See, if I can't trust you, Greg, then I have no choice but to put you right back outside the circle. And once you're out, you're out. There's no coming back. Mm. Well, I would definitely like to stay inside the circle. Well, then tell me the truth. Jack, I don't know what we're talking about. All right, now look, Father. I'm a patient man. That's what 19 months in a Vietnamese prison camp will do to you. But I will be watching you, studying your every move. And if I find that you are trying to corrupt my firstborn child, I will bring you down, baby. I will bring you down to Chinatown. Right. WJFK. Uh, 344. Now, this is what's good about doing local, at least for as long as it lasts. This, tape, this traffic was not taped. Hello, hello, Beverly. Oh. Beltway, the brake lights beginning for Route 1 to the Wilson Bridge, 395, 95 to the south. Heaviest volume down here, Dale City. The express lane, Murph, looks pretty good right now. As you head west on 66, below speed, Boston into Falls Church, west of the Beltway for a couple of stretches out toward 123. Toll road looks good. Interloop jam through Bethesda into Silver Spring with lanes open. Northbound on 355 in Rockville. Before you reach Beers Mill Road, it's the two right lanes blocked for the accident. 270 already loaded up in Clarksburg, northbound BW Parkway, heavy getting up towards Powder Mill Road. He's down on 50. Looks pretty good right now, making your way out to Bowie and on to Annapolis. Traffic's brought to you by the D.C. Powerball $28 million jackpot. Win a new Harley-Davidson motorcycle in the D.C. Lottery's new Harley-Davidson Instant Scratch Game. Top cash prize, $25,000. Look for the Harley-Davidson ticket at your D.C. Lottery retailer. Steve Britton. Here Donna Mike Show, WJFK. Thanks, Beverly. <laughs> WJFK. It's a real one. They like their cruelty the way they like their women. Naked. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. That's how crazy, that's how off the wall we are today. I accidentally called her Beverly, her real name. I was talking to your wife during the break. She's on hold. Oh, I thought that was Mr. Skin. No. <laughs> that's why I just left it on hold. No, I, I, and then we were coming back and I didn't know oh. it, it was so quick. I, well, I do you want to go on the air? Um, no, sir. I mean, uh, I was just thought you were in commercials, so I thought it was okay to call, but they're quicker now, so yeah. Yeah, sorry and, about and that. We, we were trying to get uh, Beverly, excuse me, uh, Vera. Vera, Vera traffic on, you know, on time. Do you believe that tonight? How nuts is that? Well, I just, that's what, Mike picked up the phone, but that's what I called to just make sure you were feeling okay. I'm, I'm fine, I, I was trying to call our agent, and the office is closed. <laughs> And then, then the phone rang while I was talking with the voicemail, which I didn't want to leave a message on, and I thought it was him calling me. Yeah. And then it was you, and that's, and then all of a sudden, at that very moment, we were coming back from commercials. Hey, babe, would you, would you just attest to, to everybody listening that really, and, and I've discussed this ad nauseum with you, I came in today with the best of intentions mm -hmm. to just do a, a regular radio show. Well, I, I, I think you should. Didn't I? Didn't you know, I? Yes, yes, you did say that. Yes, and you were, I mean, and I think that you should uh, soldier on and try to do a regular radio We are. We are and it's now. it's nice, but it's, you know, it's nice. It's more intimate. I like it. It's like uh, it's if you're used to sharing somebody with a big family, just having one-on-one -on -one time. I think it's nice. It's, you know, it's like uh, we're your number one market, and uh, we get to have a little private time with you. That's, so that's exactly nice. it. Right. It's well put. Right. It's just it was such a CF. And we're All right. to arrive look, at this point. Look on the positive. We're alone with you now. We like it. Say, what did I say before? All right, baby. I love you. I'll see you okay. later. Love you, too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. It's very intimate. So, listen, uh, Jim, Skin, see how, uh, Jim Skin is on the other line. Ah. Thanks. Thanks for uh, talking to my wife first. My pleasure. And uh, mm -hmm. thanks to our guys in uh, Chicago for, for, like, I guess, just deciding it's quitting time. When we get, when we get back, I uh, uh, do want to call Joe Ardinger in. As my first witness as to why this place is going cuckoo crazy today. <laughs> and I mean that uh, with all this stuff about if we're on a network, if we're not on a network. Here yeah, now everybody is, here was kind of looking forward to it. Here now is uh, Jim Skin with the website www.mrskin.com. Hey, Jim. Hey, guys. How you doing? Crazy day. You're heard on 106.7 WJFK. And 
Who knows? It's moment by moment. You might be heard across America. We're not sure. <laughs> hey, hey, Jim, uh, before we get started, I got a personal question for you because, uh, well, not a personal question, just one of my personal things. Watched a movie on cable the other night, and, I, and uh, you're usually kind of good at this, uh, but this is a tough one, I think. Uh, it was The Born Identity with Matt Damon, and it was his co-star. And she had sort of an Italian name, like Flora. She is gross. She is. I, I was captivated I've by her. I've seen that movie millions I of times. I was but she is gross. captivated by her. Dirty. Very the, sexy. The, the, uh, you mean the girl that, uh, like the Germany girl, Franca Potenta? That That's girl. the one, Franca Potenta. Yeah, yeah. What does that name tell you right there? Big, oh, uncamped, no. hairy. No, not big at all. <laughs> big, gigantic. She's so sexy. She a pet bush. Franca Potenta. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Franca Potenta. Yeah, uh, the good news is um, she got a before she got into mainstream American film back in her native Germany, uh, some really good full frontal uh, mm. uh, stuff. You definitely want to check it out. We got some great stuff at the site. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you it's all in German. I can't, can't even pronounce half the stuff, but uh, it's... You know, obviously, since uh, this was before she was famous here and got into the American movies. You know what? And, and this is not rehearsed. I mean, this is not like anybody gives Jim a little tip that I'm going to ask oh. him. This, this is I've been waiting for his segment so he I can ask him that, stuff. and he didn't disappoint me. You know, I was, oh, no, she's awesome. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. She's not like for everyone. She's definitely not a... Uh, for a heterosexual. Stop. Girl, now, but, that's uh, horrible. She's got a good... Good personality, let's put it that way. Okay, okay, thank you, Jim. Jim, here's the question. Uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see the naked pictures of her, and then, uh, then, we'll, then we'll be the judge here. All right. I, uh, Jim, can you tell us, uh, down there, is she well-coiffed, or, or does she just let it all go? She's uh, pretty, uh, pretty well clapped. It's not as, it's not crazy. Not crazy. Anything you'd like to say? But <laughs> how about ingrown hairs? Anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, she's all right. It's, it's not, it's not like a, a 1970s uh, uh, bush, but it's, it's nice. <laughs> all right. Uh, new this weekend at the uh, theater. I know you got. Uh, the, there's a Sharon Stone movie, but she doesn't get naked, right? No, no. Um, oh. here, well, here's the three that uh, the three real big ones is uh, Matchstick Men. That's the Nicolas Cage movie, PG-13. Uh, no skin in that. Um, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Now, this is an R-rated movie. Um, Desperado was where we first saw the mariachi uh, with Antonio Banderas and Selma Hayek and uh, uh, even Cheech Marin, who is also in this movie. Um, that was a 1994 movie that incidentally came out on DVD a few weeks ago, and uh, which has the Selma Hayek nudity. But this movie. Once Upon a Time in Mexico, the R-rated uh, movie in theaters uh, opening tomorrow, uh, does not have uh, Selma Hayek or Eva Mendez, the two hot babies, oh, uh, naked, which kind of is a bummer. No, that is rated. But it's still you know, and, and Jimmy, it's too bad because it was just on just last week's episode. You had that great Selma Hayek laying back on the bed with his yep. big... Gigantic boobs yeah. coming towards her face. She was on Letterman this week and just looks so hot. Yeah, I, I, I caught, saw that. I, I caught that, that appearance. She's not good with the English. <laughs> no, but doesn't matter. No. But boy, would she, would she be easy to get in the sack, huh? Oh, she is <laughs> beautiful. Oh, yeah. Does she, you know, I think you and I could just simply give her a look and no, she'd I mean, just, jump right in. Because of the language barrier. <laughs> oh, no, but I think she's uh, she travels in pretty, uh, pretty elitist circles, though. <laughs> yes, what what exactly. girl don't understand this? Uh, yeah. That's true. Is that how you would signal her that you were interested in you're dating? Sitting, you're sitting at a bar, and you put your left hand in the OK sign, and you take your right index finger, right. you put it right there, you go, hey, hot stuff. Walk into the bar. <laughs> Selma, I understand you don't speak English, but how about a little of this? Hey, Unibro. <laughs> I'm not give her that. So, all right. She's but anyway, but the, the, there's good news, though. There's a, a movie that opens tomorrow, a horror movie that's actually a really cool horror flick called Cabin Fever. It's from Lionsgate, and uh, it features... Um, there's two hot babes in this movie. Um, one is Jordan Ladd, who is the daughter of Cheryl Ladd, who we all remember from Charlie's Angel. Whoa. And, uh, and Jordan is just as hot as her mom. Uh, and uh, Now, Jordan is not naked in this, but she does get into a black bikini that's really... Uh, uh, she looks great. Uh, reminded me of the old uh, Cheryl Ladd in her uh, Charlie's Angels bikinis. How, but, um, old, how, how old is she, Jim? Is she like how... 22 or 3. All mm. right, wow. Yeah, she's young. She's a... Uh, Street legal, really... Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but then the other girl in the movie is named Serena Vincent. Now, 
Um, if you remember a movie uh, from last year called Not Another Teen Movie, it was a parody of all the teen movies. She mm -hmm. played the naked exchange student, was, which was a takeoff of uh, um, Shannon Elizabeth and American Pie. And uh, in that movie, she got she basically walked around completely nude. Well, in this movie, you get uh, two great scenes where you see her phony fun baggage. Uh, she does not have real breasts, but they still look great. Yeah, but you know, uh, the only problem, and I was going to say there are obvious fakes mm -hmm. on Serena Vincent. Vincent. Uh, the problem is, and the ones that they were... smell like tuna fish. <laughs> the Rob's eating his lunch again in here. Uh, the right one, and one of the pictures you have on MrSkin.com, you can, like, see the outline of the bag... And then there's a line which I don't think she's skinning enough to have a rib poking through. Yeah, it looks as though there's some sort of uh, raised area there. It looks disturbing. A valve or something. That is not the best boob job I've ever seen. Right. You know, um, you, you'll put up with panty lines, but not bag lines is what no, you're saying. No, very right? disturbing. A little disturbing. <laughs> yeah, a little disturbing. But anyway, she has, uh, well, this will be better for you then. There's also a... But they're nice fake ones. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, and she's super hot. And uh, during a sex scene, you get a nice uh, upper butt crack shot which uh, uh, no one can complain about it because that is hers i've uh, i've analyzed that and that, that hasn't her. been surgically enhanced <laughs> yeah so cabin fever which opens tomorrow uh lionsgate flick has a uh, really really good uh, uh skin and you get jordan ladd in a bikini so uh okay. very good Ch check that out now uh dvds this week um they released uh new release this week movie called nobody's fool it's a 1994 movie you guys might have caught it on cable at some point sad to say jim i've seen it Bruce Willis uh, and Paul Newman. And Paul Newman. Yes, and it's about this blue collar guy who's approaching retirement age, played by Paul Newman. And uh, uh, actually, it's surprised. It's kind of surprised me when it came out. It was uh, pretty good. It was a, yeah, good nudity for a Paul Newman flick. And uh, um, one scene is uh, Melanie Griffith uh, happens about 53 minutes in. She just at work just flashes it's, Paul Newman, and a, I got to say, uh, it's a tremendously, good. tremendously sexy scene. Mm. Yeah, and it, I, we know that she's had work done. The question is. From this scene in Nobody's Fool, then MrSkin.com, are these enhanced? Yes. They I, are. Well, here's why. Because if you look at her older uh, pictures of her topless and her older stuff, even going back to, like, something wild in the 80s and then, you know, back into the 70s, um, her breasts definitely were a little, you know, a little smaller. So, and, and they're standing pretty proud there. Uh, Boy, that's the, a good job, though. She had, I mean, spared no expense on those. Oh, no, these were top of the line. This was not uh, <laughs> a bargain basement. Wouldn't it be great if every woman in your life, Presented herself to you as such. When with that attitude. When you came home at the, at the end of the day, she's like, here they are. Yeah. I know this is what you've been thinking about. Here they are. <laughs> and now also in this movie. And yeah, this is cool, too. There's uh, a scene. Melanie Griffith is married to Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis is stepping out on Melanie Griffith. And Melanie Griffith comes into a, a bar where Bruce Willis is playing poker, strip poker with some other people, and a girl with... Incredible jugs that I remember. That's the scene, right, Jim? Yeah, but here's the. This is the reason I threw this in. I usually don't talk about anonymous babe nudity, but she has a, a tiny bit of celebrity here. You'll you'll get a kick out of this. The girl in question in Nobody's Fool that was playing strip poker. Her name is Ange Angelica Torn. Now. Um, you you know her dad very well, Rip Torn from wow. the Larry Sanders show. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Hey now. <laughs> so, hey uh, now! Yeah, so it's she's the daughter of uh, Rip Torn was married to Geraldine Page, and uh, that's his daughter. So I'm a huge Larry Sanders fan. And, oh man! Uh, and I she looks Rip like yes, yeah, she looks like a little bit like Geraldine Page too. Right. Exactly. And thank God she looks nothing like Artie. <laughs> I mean Rip Torn. Well, she and Geraldine Page in her in her last Geraldine Page is no longer with us, right? Isn't she? Uh, that is correct. She passed away. Well, she I passed away, but uh, did she but, have did she have big jugs? She I, I don't I don't consider you know she never I tried to look you know that's interesting because when I saw these pics I went back and tried to find some Geraldine Page you know cleavage shots because I wasn't she never was naked so I was at least looking for cleavage and I really didn't find anything that I could say for sure whether she was a small or a medium so um, but but her daughter sure had some nice uh, and, you know and, and thinking about Geraldine Page and Rip Torn. <laughs> That means that not only is this one, well, she's very attractive, and I didn't consider them to be very attractive actors, but I think it's pretty safe to say this woman will grow up to be a certified nut. <laughs> I mean, there'll be no question about it. Yeah, hold on. Now, here's, hold on. We got a table rip touring. Right? What you do? Go to Rotterdam, then you go to Amsterdam, then you go down the road to my city. What's that? That's right. It's a little place called I Don't Give a Damn. <laughs> That's the guy. And you would not believe how hot his daughter is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, Jim, I'm going to give you 
mad, crazy, wild props. <laughs> because not only is this a, such a good pull on a movie that I that I like as a good movie, but with the great nudity and you pick the two best scenes with uh, with Melanie Griffith and and with Rip Torn's daughter. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that Jumbo is. Jack. That's right? great. Yep. yep. But uh, and then two final things I wanted to talk about. Um, there's been you, you might have heard a little about it in the news wires. They've been talking about a movie called In the Cut. I've been kind of harping on this movie for six months, and um, it's a, a movie that's directed by Jane Campion. She's the director that did The Piano with Holly Hunter and Harvey Keitel full frontal. Uh, Holy Smokes, another movie she did where Kate Winslet goes full frontal. And uh, in this movie, uh, Meg Ryan, thirty uh, uh, something, uh, Meg Ryan plays a New York writing professor who has an incredibly steamy affair with a police detective uh, played uh, by is, Mark uh, Ruffalo. Is, is that uh, her? And, is, is that and her they're uh, going nuts out at the uh, Toronto Film Festival where I have a skin turn that has reported back to me that uh, um, great, great, like six different sex scenes. You even get a little uh, look at uh, when uh, Harry met Sally, so I'm, I'm <laughs> really excited about this. So, uh, now, this movie will pr probably be out uh, late October or sometime in November, depending, but um, there's no guarantee when something's at, at a film festival, there's no guarantee that everything guys see at the film festival will show up when mm. it's, you know, rated by the board, and, you know, and it comes out, so we're not positive, but from what they're seeing at this, it's going to be awesome, and, it, and there's been some articles about it, people talking like, whoa, that's the big story at the Toronto Film Festival is Meg Ryan's nudity. You got you got a, the the clip here on MrSkin dot com from the Doors. Yeah, I showed her. you guys. I wanted you to see her breast now, is, uh, earlier in her career from the Doors. Is that real? Yep, that's her. That's real, and that's and you know you got to consider because Meg Ryan's laying on her back there. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. where you get that pancake, that sagging thing. That's pretty good right there. Not here. Look at those. Pretty good stuff. Wow. Yeah, it's really nice. So I'm I'm really excited with that. This will be coming to theaters, and uh, it, it's sounding really really good. And what's this last disturbing image we're going to be looking at, Jim? <laughs> the last one. Uh, there's a lot of fans uh, out there of Christina Ricci. Yeah. And this is another movie yeah. that uh, yeah. uh, four times it's been uh, uh, Miramax has, it was supposed to be in theaters and four times Miramax has pulled it. The reason a lot of guys want to check out this movie, and there are, believe it or not, there are Christina Ricci fans out there. I can't um, understand in the that. first 15 minutes of the flick, God. she is sitting down and she is completely naked. It's tough from those pictures. We do have pics from it. Uh, they're she not the quality well. when the DVD comes she out. She looks but, 12. Yeah. She looks 12 years old. <laughs> well, not that 21. I have a working she's knowledge. She's 21 in the scene, so. <laughs> Wow! Just look at that! Look at that baby face, though, and look at that. I just think she's fugly. That underdeveloped body. <laughs> well, not really. Not well, underdeveloped. No, it's not, not underdeveloped. That. No, her no, breasts no, no. Are, Her breasts are pretty big. They are. They, they are large. Well, they don't look big where she's sitting on the toilet. <laughs> no, she's sitting on a bed. It's not. <laughs> what are you looking at? Are you Are you looking at the same photos we're all looking at? Right here. You got her sitting on a toilet, and you say she's underdeveloped. She does have large breasts. I just think she's not. I don't think find her attractive. A lot of guys do. I get a lot of um, emails about. Her and uh, she's no front to this That's movie to come out, Prozac Nation. It was actually it was filmed in nine in, in uh, two thousand. It was filmed in two thousand and one, and it came out, uh, uh, or it still hasn't come out. So uh, you know, she was only twenty-one. You know when did this movie, Mr. Skin? You know what it is. Don wants her to be sitting on the toilet. That's, <laughs> what, that's what it is. How big are her boobs? Well, here's the deal. She actually had a reduction. So in this movie, they were 34 C's, uh, yeah. and uh, supposedly she got wow. reduced. I gotta get me some glasses because those don't look like 34 <laughs> C's to me. Those are no, and ma maybe it's the combination of that and the 12 year old girl face that's on <laughs> top of them. <laughs> Yuck! But uh, yeah, she's actually there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scenes that I'm seeing where she's on the toilet. Not out of bed. Out of bed. Oh, out on the bed. <laughs> See, I thought that one was on the toilet. You want her to be on the toilet. You <laughs> desperately want her to be on the toilet. My, my mistake. Rob, does that look to you like she's on the toilet or on the bed? I think that's very toilet esque. <laughs> yeah, you can't that means the... Rob desperately wants her to be on the toilet. Hey, too. I fantasize it's a toilet. That's fine with me. <laughs> All right, Rob, we need, we need the music here to get out with you. Oh, me. my God. We've got some good stuff uh, this week. Oh. Uh, uh, Jim, what is the, the next big theatrical movie nude event? Is there one on the horizon before Christmas? Well, uh, Monster is the Shelley Theron movie where she's going to be very naked. Um, that'll be out uh, sometime this year. Hello. Um, another one is. Is uh, 
the Nicole Kidman in a few weeks, uh, The Human Stain. <laughs> She's going to be naked in that. And, and Ashley Judd has a movie called The Blackout Murders that is going to be coming out uh, uh, early next year that's going to have tons of nudity. So uh, we're loaded up. There, there's going to be some good stuff. As we hit the fall, there's even going to be a lot more because now the R-rated... Uh, that's the biography hit. of our agent, The Human Stain. <laughs> yeah, we're preoccupied, Jim. Sorry. No, no problem. Uh, there he is. The world's greatest website, www.mrskin.com. Dot com. Jim, thank you for indulging us this week. We'll be to, we'll be better next week. No problem, guys. That was a lot of fun. Okay, see you later. Bye bye. Hey, and Joe, if you're listening, get me a picture of Franca Potente, please. And you know the best one this week was the Melody Griffith. Those yeah. are the best breasts. And if you've seen going that, away, if you've seen that movie, at one point Paul Newman comes into the office and says to her something like, "We should run away," or, or something. She says they can't, and then she just lifts up her shirt and she says, "Here they are. Look at them." It's a marvelous moment with Melanie Griffith. Melanie Griffith and her, and her big, gigantic, just... Those are perfect. You, know, you always ask, you know, what... In my mind, those are the perfect breasts right there. Yeah, even though those, they... You can't even tell they're fake. And those are fixed. Unlike this girl, Serena Vincent. Mm -hmm. I mean... And those are not good. I, and I hate to... Those they, really... Those look like something you'd find in an amusement park. <laughs> Jim, uh, Jim uh, pulls... I don't know the, why I said that. Jim pulls I like the, it, though. Jim pulls the best stuff for us, but... I couldn't help but noticing, yeah, you're right, the sack. And that, there's something there. The sack or this rid, this ridge of some kind that's mm. right right below her right right breast. Anyway. You know where I, somebody was talking to me? You know where certain women uh, have that surgery done now? In the navel. What, the boob surgery? They, they go in through the navel. Really? Yep. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. 404. 404. Just us here at WJFK. I don't know where I got that information. I don't know. Just it came out. I did. Just came out. Hey, Don and Mike show, JFK. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? <sighs> hey, we're having the greatest show of our lives, living the greatest day of our lives. Now, I wish I could say the same, but unfortunately, I can't because all I'm listening to is static out here in Severna Park going into Annapolis. So I just want to <laughs> tell your uh, people in charge, the big uh, yucky yucks with the suits, you know, screw your heads back on, guys. Get your head out of your ass. Take a breath of reality. These guys have a great show. Leave them alone. Well, they, you know, for the most part, I, I have to say they are leaving us alone. Very Even right. our own side is leaving us alone now. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? We're, we're, we're not, you know, I know you guys don't care if we're happy, but, you know, this screws up our drive home. No, we so do, we care, do care. We do care if you're happy, which is why we thought we had come to a nice compromise with, with, you know, with Westwood they, they One today. The they threw the switch on live. We listened to you guys for a minute and 37 that, seconds or something like that. And then you know what? Up. Nobody's going to defend that, and I'm not going to sit here and defend that. We weren't for no, that. I no. mean, if they had, we gave them the options today, just so you know, and I promise change the topic here. We gave them the options that we go on the network, do a regular show, have it be WJFK, but mm -hmm. give you the regular show. Or you can, you know, do what you did Tuesday. They call us up. They say, well, the decision has been made from the highest level. They're going to play a tape. We went fine. That's cool. You know, we even looked at that as maybe a good sign. They're going to mm -hmm. continue to talk to, to our, uh, our ballless agent. Can't and do that, though. Why? He's not home. Right. And, well, then, and then as, as we get on the air and find out we're on the network, <laughs> our agent calls us on the hotline. Yeah, and then apparently was talking to us and, uh, as he was just dashing out of his office. To go get a hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. All right, sorry that this is so effed up today. Sorry. But it's, you know, I'll say this. It's a nice effed up. It's almost like a first time in radio effed up. It's very relaxed. It's 406 WJFK. Cloudy tonight, low 62. Rain tomorrow, high 70. And this now, the new touch from Buzz. Yes. But a nice weekend ahead. Hey, thanks, Buzz. You're thanks welcome. Buzz. Now, who knows if he's making it up or not? Oh, he is. Uh, 76. I'm now, a dream. <laughs> there was only one one problem before the show today. I mean, there was a major problem when we got on the air. But before the show today, when we were under the belief that we were just going to be here on WJFK, okay. and I have to keep reminding myself that we are only on WJFK, because mm -hmm. for a while I... I you know, for f three or four minutes, or I under right. I thought, well, okay, we're on the network. Yeah. All right, so we'll we'll deal with that. But now, now we're not. Right. That's fine. Great. Love being here. The only change that this made for Joe Ardinger was every hour. One of Joe's duties is to get the commercials mm -hmm. and put them in a stack. Right. Prepare right. the commercial right. breaks. Here's, right. Yeah, that's here's it. Some commercials right here. Right. All we asked Joe to do was take three of the commercials. Mm -hmm. That were scheduled to run between 3 and 4 p.m. Right. And instead of playing them at 3.40, mm -hmm. play them at 3 o'clock. Let us 
No, let us give the advertisers exactly what they're clamoring for. Spot between three and seven. And let's be honest, let's burn off a couple. Let, let's, yeah. let's, let's burn off a couple so we have more time later in the show and we always run late. Right. Well, I asked Rob, and it seemed as, to be a simple enough proposition. Great. Rob was on the phone in, in the office across from me talking to Joe, and it was the longest conversation I ever heard. And finally, the last thing I heard Rob say was, all right, I'll tell him. Bye. And I said, what? Tell me what? And Joe said, tell me that what he was doing was a colossal, a colossal waste of his time. Here really? now is Joe Ardinger. That's not exactly how the day went. <laughs> All right, how'd the day go, Joe? At about 1.30, Charlie said... Oh, do we have the music, Robbie? Oh, you want Joe's music? Joe's music. <laughs> That'd be nice. Because it sounds like we got a story coming up. It's, it's Joe's soapbox. Joe's going to tell us what the deal is. And, and, and Rob, we're going to play commercials pretty quick here, right? Yeah, we can. I, and I mean, don't say we can't. I have no idea the schedule today. Hey, but no, he, he can sound, sound like that. He's doing uh, his uh, his Eferman in, in person. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the room, Mike. Um, All right. we, we go a couple minutes. All right, whatever. Okay, thank we you. We can, whatever you wish. Here is uh, here is my man. Joe's not just a name; it's an idea. Star of the Joe Show. How does expect more from a kid named Joe? We love him on Stump the Joe. Joe, you're Joe Ardinger. And don't forget Joe's book club. Oh, that's right. Joe. So, Joe, what, what's your story? Anyway, time? about 1.30, Charlie came down to the studio and he said, uh, here's what I want you to do. Go through the four hours of the show. I, like, like, I'm sorry. I just like hearing you tell a story. You know that. Go through the four, four hours of the show. Go through the commercial breaks. Find the commercials that can be played in the 2 o'clock hour so that we can get them out of the content of the show. This is better than him reading books, isn't yes, it? it is. So I said, okay, that's fine. So I set about doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Does any? I, I want to. I, I come up with an analogy here. Has anybody sure. ever watched Cops when the three cruisers arrive at the at the house and the guy's standing outside with his shirt off and he's trying to explain <laughs> his side of the story to the right. cops? Right. That's exactly what this sounds like right now. Go ahead, Joe. You tell the that, officers. That what is happened. what I did. I got the, I got the commercials that could play in the two o'clock hour mm -hmm. and. Had you I... been drinking, son? <laughs> no, no, sir. Okay. <laughs> but, um, and then I picked the content for the show so that I had a certain amount of content for the show. Son, can I ask of... you a question here? When we interview Mr. Spiewak, will he agree with your side of the story? I think so. All right, very good. He's waiting in the cruiser right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's cuffed. <laughs> He's cuffed. And getting him in, it took two guys to push his head in. Because you know the thing is, they do a cops where they push the head yep. in to get him in the back. Had to get the jaws of life to cut a hole in the in the. <laughs> Ceiling. If you've just tuned in to WJFK, you're listening to us talk to Joe. He wants some friendly advice. The haircut and take a bath. <laughs> you get hassled so much. <laughs> I simply asked Joe why it was a colossal waste of time to move three commercials. No, no, no. See, I'm explaining it. So Explain. then, a couple of minutes before 2 o'clock, before the whole hour is supposed to start, Rob called. Here's Joe. Or no, I'm sorry. Charlie called back and said, um, "Yeah." He said, "Don't worry about." Or he said, uh, "Oh, remember, God, come on." He said, "Remember what I told you about not worrying about hitting the top of the hour for the network." Sure. Now I need you. To, uh, Don wants fifty nine forty one to hit the top of the hour for the network launch, and I said, "I think I can make that happen," but. You know, I'll, uh, I guess Rob will have to clip off part of the best of. In well, essence, all we asked him to do, and and granted, this changed a few times. To make that, a long story short, please, please do. I had, I had configured the entire hour to end at fifty nine forty one. Joe, the make last a long story minute, short. I was told to go ahead and add three more minutes to it. The problem being, I had a seven-minute commercial break between Joe. the best of and the and the actual show, yeah. which made it a ten-minute break. Like, there's a problem with running ten minutes of commercials on this station. It's, but is it a colossal waste of time? It was a colossal waste of time. I don't right? understand why. And but so I, I said to Rob, and then I said, oh, the best part was when I said to Charlie, I said, you know, tomorrow, just a little bit of heads up. Show starts at two o'clock every day. Maybe we can figure it out. Charlie goes, okay, Joe. Yeah. Well, Joe, you should. That was Joe. a good story. I was cross. Now, I have one question for you. <laughs> I was cross. cross. Joe, you should I got know. really. We don't know. I know. I mean, like you're saying to Charlie, it would be nice to know. It would be nice to know. It would be nice yeah. for all of us. We'd all like. I, I have a question because it happened several times in your yarn. How, how long have you been confusing Charlie and Rob? No, they were both. Uh, you, you did that like eight different times. You said, and I told Rob, 
I mean, Charlie, and I told Char I mean, Rob said, I'm just curious. Joe. Do you like, have trouble telling like, them I like apart? I say, if you're talking to Charlie or Rob, you're talking to Don. Okay. So, All either right. way, it doesn't hardly matter. <laughs> it's okay to confuse us because our personalities are identical <laughs> and we're physically similar. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand that. But I don't like when Joe is crying. A colossal waste of time. That is the quote. <laughs> that's what I'm putting on. As a matter of fact, that's the header I just put on the computer for today's show. I like a that. A colossal waste of time. C-W-O-T. Put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. And, and Rob was Joe. Joke was, put it on the blackboard for everyone to see. Sure. Was uh, was was Joe <laughs> cross today? Um, he was definitely cross on the phone. <laughs> but then I realized it was all Alan's fault. So then I realized we were all in the same boat, That's the rudderless right. ship. I just knew I was getting in there somewhere. Where <laughs> Rob, Rob says, "All right, I'll tell him." He looks right at me. You know, Joe, did you know when Rob is making that call, he's like right in the office with I me. Know. Yeah, yeah, right. I told him to tell you. That's right. He was cross. He meant his word. <laughs> well, that uh, that story wasn't a colossal waste of time. No, not at all. Joe. 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 All right, thanks, Joe. See thanks ya. a lot. Hey, how's the temperature on the telephones there today? World's oldest phone screener. How's the temperature? I'm just. It's all uh, people from the, all over the country, so I either just let them ring or I X them out. Okay. Well, I answer them. I, okay. I mean, answer them. I, I know it's tough. But should answer I just them. answer them and hang up on them, or should I no, no, bring out the 703s? No, no, just answer all of the calls, but the people from other places, just tell them we don't know what's going on, because we don't. Okay, so I'm going to have to say that about 600 times today. That sounds like a colossal right. waste of time. A colossal waste of time. <laughs> colossal waste of time. <laughs> waste of time. <laughs> colossal waste of time. There he goes. There he goes. Joe Ardinger. Yeah. 50 year old phone screener with a Dave and Buster's t shirt on. Tell you what I like about that guy. Can do. That's yes. right. That's my man, Joe. And a master storyteller. Can do. Yeah. He would have done good in the Celtic peoples, in, you know, with, essence, the, uh, with, with the oral histories. In essence, all we said to him was take the first three. Now, I know we changed it a couple of well, times. It sounded like me like you said to him was play an extra three commercials. Play three commercials at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You tell Don this is a colossal waste of time. Okay. It'd be nice to know about this in advance. Well, he was cross. He was cross. Yeah. Well, well, he's cross Joe. Words. He's under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Well, it's 415. WJFK will be right back. What can Brown do for you today? Brown's done a lot for me today. 421. <laughs> Here's the lady with the fake name. Hello. Still going. Out of the Beltway before Route 1 to the Wilson like Bridge. Me. 395. 95. More fake volume name. down on Landmark. 95 getting through Newington. Then again through Woodbridge and Dale City toward the express lane merge. All lanes are open, though. She heads south toward Fredericksburg. Route 1, the signal light delays down into Woodbridge. And, of course, getting through Fort Belvoir. 66 getting through Boston Falls Church to send out. Now heavy volume getting out to Fairfax and getting into Manassas. Interloop delays from Bethesda into Silver Spring. Northbound 355. Early incident at uh, Dodge Street before you reach Fears Mill Road at tied up the right side of the roadway. 270 northbound, slow early out of Gaithersburg, most of the way through Clarksburg. Earlier police incident has been cleared now. The fine heavy traffic on northbound Interstate 95 getting up past 212. BW Parkway certainly getting past Powder Mill Road, but all lanes are open there as well. Traffic's brought to you by the DC Powerball $28 million jackpot. Yeah. Win a new Harley Davidson motorcycle and the Good DC girl. Lottery's new Harley Davidson in the scratch game. <laughs> Top cash prize $25,000. Look for the new Harley Davidson. Ticket at Lottery Retailer. Here abruptly down to Mike's show, WJFK. Right, that's good. That's good. See, you know what that was? That was a minute worth of traffic. Not the usual 15 seconds and then a long, big ass commercial. We didn't do weather. WJFK. <laughs> we didn't do the weather. We there. didn't do the weather. It was the weather, the weather music. 422. Uh, Buzz, what do you got there? Well, hold on. Okay, you can put it up against the window, Buzz. I could do it. No, you can't. Turning cloudy overnight with a low around 82. Excuse me, 62. I can't read it. Rain tomorrow with a high around 70. But a nice weekend ahead for all of you. WKFK. Well, just having fun. I know, but that's, that's the whole thing. It kills you. That's it's like, I've thing. done it. I have a history. I was capable. I know you did, but that's my thing. I know. All right. I'll never do it again. I promise you. I will I never do it again for the rest of today's show. I like doing it. I know you do. It's the, one, it's the, it's the small part of this show that I truly live for. <laughs> <laughs> the weather. The weather. Really? That's the it? Weather. Well, <laughs> nothing beats a tight, bright weather bed, Rob. I mean, you can talk about other stuff. That's the beauty of it, that you've got the music. And then you can say, cloudy tonight, low 62, and say, this is where I get my real my real energy. 78 right now. WKFK. See, you can, like, you can weave thoughts in, and you know mm -hmm. that you've only got 15 seconds to do it. It's exciting. Is it 78 now? 78 right now. All right. 
78, and I'll tell you this. What? You shouldn't have played golf with your ex-wife today. Stop it. Don't talk about <laughs> that. Get my kidding about that. Filling time. Sorry. Now he's mad. 78. WKFK. I'm not mad, I but know. don't do that again. Please. Did you win? It's in my notes. <laughs> Did you win? It's in my notes. I'm, so, I'm sorry. That wasn't like a... No, I, mean, I had a very nice time. Had a very nice time. But... Just wrote what, what, what I wrote. Yeah. Hi, Charlie. Can Mike run the board? No, not today. <laughs> no, not today. Not today. I, excuse me. I know it's been 18 years, <laughs> but I was a disc jockey. I know you were. I'm not a tard when it comes to it. And I... after a proper amount of training, I could run the board. I could. I know Now, if you, you could. throw me into it without any practice... Get out of here. That would be great. Get out you and your, your, you was your, your miniature golf? You and your ridiculously loud shirt. <laughs> but, Mike, you can't knock it. It's a patriotic shirt. Yes, it is. It's a red, white, and That's blue That's why shirt. I said ridiculously loud and not red, white, and blue. Well, let me take this time. It's 424 on WJFK. Yes. Say, I'm sorry. I'll share this with you if you like it. No. We're sharing it right now. No, no, no. I know it means a lot to you. Like it or not, rain to But I hate it when he high head that puts that sign up that's seven miles away. 78 right now. WKFK. They can expect from Chingle All the Way is a hilarious movie. A movie where they will be able to laugh from the beginning to the end. It will be great entertainment. They will walk out of the theater and say... I am so angry that I can't get another ticket right away because I want to see you the second time. And there's a long line here. But you know why I couldn't read low of 62? And I said low of 82? Because when I asked him to show it to me, instead of really turning it to me, he went... You know what you've like done that. here? That's yeah, my fault. It is your fault. I have to, You have taken a beautiful thing at 78 right now. You've taken a, a potentially beautiful thing and just marred it. I have. You did. So now every time you hear that no, weather no, no. bed? No, no, no. You don't know where I was. I was. I played it, and you said, because Buzz was holding the thing up. And I was going to say, go ahead, hold it up, Buzz. Please to join Mike and the Crap Blues Band <laughs> tonight for the Thursday night jam at Brady's in Manassas. Join me, Mike, Brooks Shields, AP All-American football team tonight at Brady's in Old Town, Manassas. We're going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> See? Now I'm happy. Now he's happy. Now, See, if you ever pissed me off and, and you want to just get me back in, there's a plug card in there for the band. Really, were you really pissed, though? No. I didn't think so. Well, you said I was. Though. I know, but playful piss. Yes, playful piss. Double B. Cloudy overnight. Plus, I got it memorized. All right. Rain tomorrow. Now, hold it up again. Rain tomorrow. High <laughs> 70. What was I thinking? My current temperature? 78. <laughs> Listen up, you BM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK, you can call John and Mike toll-free at 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. They like holes, not holes. Don and Mike. See, that's my bag. I look for that. For that uh, tight, bright, out of sight. Well, I was also going to say when Charlie came in about running the board, it, it's kind of like coming over, even though I could run the board, that, that is something that uh, I have always told you, that uh, nobody does that like you do. And, that, uh, true. and there it is. There it is, a naked, non-ass-kissing compliment to you. Thank you. you. Nobody runs a tighter board. Nobody ever has run a tighter board. I'm sorry about the G thing. <laughs> yeah, it was really. It's, I'm just thinking about the show now. It was. Yeah. It was in my notes. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I exit out. That's good. I exit out. <laughs> you know. It's four twenty-seven. <laughs> on WJFK one hundred six point seven. And I, you know, no. I don't. I don't even think we should uh, address this because we have reports on the telephone. We're going to desperately trying to get back to the rhythm of doing a sure. regular show. And what we did there with the with the you know our. Crazy antics with the weather jingle. We are having fun, and that's, um, that's the whole idea. We're getting reports now, though, from Baltimore that apparently, due to a side agreement, they have some kind of illegal feed, <laughs> but it keeps switching back and forth huh. between what we're actually doing on the radio on WJFK and the network feed. Well, that's, that's weird. I, I thought that I they were know. working on some sort of illegal agreement. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike's show. Don? Yeah, and Mike, hi. This is uh, Dave in Burlington, and we had a, two Hold minutes. On. We had two minutes of local com, local Washington commercial. Hold on, this guy's in Vermont. I apologize. He's wow. not in Baltimore. Oh. Then we got the best of opening. Uh -huh. Then that went right into the live opening. <laughs> 
We got 10 minutes of the show at 15 after we went to commercials, and it's been best of ever since. Uh, okay, so okay. you're in, you're in Vermont. Sorry about that. We didn't we didn't run out today. That's actually how Westwood has it designed when they mail the hot clock out to the affiliates. That's how it's supposed <laughs> now to be. Now a every hot day. clock. Who knows what a okay, hot clock the is? The schedule is Hello. designed to run like that. Don and Mike, WJFK. <laughs> Hello. Hi, is it me? Yeah, Matt. Hi. Hey, I got uh, 106 and 105 both on the radio right now. You want to hear one and then the other? Sure, let's hear. Let's hear. Hey, well, right, no, 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 Matt, we don't have to hear it. Just tell us. Is 1057 running the same thing as 1067? Yes, and it has about a three second delay behind you guys. Hmm. All right, well, All right, that's more fine. Power, more power. More power. Well, to then, that. fine. More power. Well, then, hey. More power to that, whatever. whatever Jones said. This is a kooky day. Well, then, hey. <laughs> uh, this is. And I know exactly what we need what? to get us back on track with the show. Oh, and today, listen, on the show on WJFK, we're, we'll be giving away uh, this uh, WWE uh, ringside tickets and, and meet and greet your favorite WWE wrestler. Monday at Raw MCI Center, uh, Monday, uh, September 2-2. Catch all the action, the excitement of WWE. Don't miss 25 of your favorite WWE superstars. We'll give this away later today. Good. And uh, just perhaps... Will do make us laugh. Ah, today, oh, today, just for our backyard. Today might be a, a good chance. Yeah, and God knows, I know we're ready to laugh. We are. <laughs> we are. We are really, really ready to laugh. It's a good day to try um, to laugh. Hold on. Hello, Don and Mike, WJFK. Don and Mike, this is Neptune. I would like to do some voice for WJFK. All right, hold on. Let me take this one. Now, this is a guy who apparently thinks he's listening to the tape. But he thinks it's live. Oh. Hey, hey sure. Don, Don and Mike, hello. Yeah, got me? Yeah, you're on the air. Hi, Dave. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, you, you guys are freaking me out with all these different radio stations. I, uh, I'm hearing one thing on 95.6, and then while I was waiting on hold, it sounds like a totally different show. No, it's because we're running a, 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 a lot of delay today. Well, you're call right. What's the topic you're calling about? Well, I was listening to uh, 95.9, and, and they, uh, you guys were just talking to that dog guy. Oh, yeah. yeah, that yeah. dog guy, yeah. He was pretty funny, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, uh, there was a film going around down here on the shore probably about three years ago of a local girl and her uh, canine friend and her boyfriend. That was freaky. Well, is there any way you could get a hold of that and get it to us before the end of the show today? Could you have her oh, call no. us? Pardon me? Could you have her call us or, or someone? Who... No, I don't, no, she she got in trouble with the law, and oh, really? uh, the the boyfriend broke up with her and sent her father a copy, put it in his mailbox. Hey, hey just, listen, th thank you. We got to move on. Anybody you want to say hi to? Anybody special that you've never been able to say hi to on the radio before? We're having a wacky day today, so go ahead. Uh, my 94-year-old grandmother in Baltimore, who's never going to listen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, thanks, ass. Thank you. Bye. Bye, ass. You know, strangely, if she was, she'd be able to hear him do that. Yeah. Even though he was calling from somewhere else, right? <laughs> Where was he calling from? I think he was calling from the Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't either. Oh, man. But we weren't talking to a dog guy. No, and they we said now that even though it's a three-second delay, in his he should be able to hear that. What you, the hell is going on? He would have <laughs> thought that he would have figured out. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, buddy. Hey, hi. Uh, today, I was listening to the good old G. Gordon Liddy show, and he was going through, you know, how September 11th changed your life, and he was going blah, 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 blah. He came up and said, well, there's, I'm not going to name name, but two disc jockeys out of Hagerstown, I mean, out of uh, Washington, D.C., who talk trash talk radio are no longer syndicated because that's what the American people don't want. Well, good for that pathetic old man and his penis pump. Good for him. So I just thought I'd let you know why you're not syndicated anymore. Oh, good. Well, uh, that's interesting. Well, stay tuned. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Hello. Not in my show. Hello. Hey, I'm calling about a Skeletor also. A G Skeletor? Liddy. Yeah, uh, G Gordon Liddy. Liddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it's really uh, really low that he can kind of place you guys with the tragic events that happened in 9-11. I, you know, and I, I didn't mean this seriously. And I'm just, it's like, if, if there is not a more unpatriotic thing seriously that you could do i mean all all gamens, gamesmanship aside you want to talk about the fact that we might be on westwood one or might not be on westwood he, one? he tied his 9-11 spiel into slamming us that's yeah. what this guy's yeah, saying that's, 
What exactly? I mean, I, the other guy didn't do a good job. Can you tell me what he said? He said that uh, America, after 9-11, was tired of listening to trash. And that's why today you guys are not syndicated anymore. <laughs> oh, what a son of a bitch. That old man, <laughs> that old, feeble, monopoly man, popping his Viagra like like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> God. What, what kind of life does he have that he can sit around and think of the time to, to you know, to make comments like that? Well, he's bitter. You know, and you know what it is? It's fishing. You know, I'll say this for, for Liddy. He's been in radio long enough. He knows if he says something, he's going to call us up, especially today on a wacky day like today. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to get through. Yep. But I got news for you. I could announce G. Gordon Liddy on 570 WTNT. I could announce that every five minutes today, and I guarantee his rating would be exactly the same when the next rating book came out. Mm -hmm. Which, hello, Nick Fly. <laughs> hey, Liddy. <laughs> How you like that 0 0.3 share you have? <laughs> Yeah, so, How do you so like we, that? How do you like the fact that a dumb ass like Bill O'Reilly is pulling double the numbers you pulled? There you go. Bill O'Reilly, fake newsman. <laughs> and Ron and Fez could just do a comedy radio show. They're quadrupling what you have. There you go. And, Gordon. And the reruns of our show from 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. Remember, Gordon, when you used to be on here on a, on a real station from 2 to 3? Six times what you had. Wow. And I'm not making these statistics up. I'm ready for this fight with this old man. I'm ready. <laughs> not even a fair fight anymore. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. But he is bitter, and that's why he says the things he does. Yes, he does. I think it is entirely pathetic. But where's my pee? Where's my pee bucket? On 9-11, on America said... Well, actually, I believe it was a few months before that. Mel Karmazin said, you are no longer a part of WJFK and relegated you to an AM station in Rockville. Uh -huh. You old, pathetic, monopoly man. Coney Island. That was Coney Island. Did I was he? defending Coney Island with my life. <laughs> yeah, because that dog. Because that's where the Japs. That's where the Japs are going to attack. Yeah. Beware! At, at the place on Coney Island where you squirt you squirt the water into the clown's mouth to make the balloon on his head blow up. That predates me. <laughs> I predate that. Ski ball. Ski ball. Yes, we had ski ball. No, we had horses jump off the pier. <laughs> That's what we had in my day. We had Harry Houdini. <laughs> Harry Houdini chaining himself and hanging upside down. Brother. Uh, uh. Whatever. Yeah, hey, Liddy, you got, I got news for you, too, about Westwood One. Wise up. You got the same bad deal that we do, except guess what? Yeah. You're so feeble, you probably don't even know how bad they screwed you over. <laughs> and let me ask you one final question, G. Gordon Liddy. How did 9-11 affect your relationship with Francis? Ooh. When I I'd be think, interested to hear him talk about that. Because when I think about 9-11 and everything, I think about families that are apart, and yeah. I wonder, what was your sainted mother's favorite girlfriend of all time, your wife, Frances. What was she thinking on 9-11? Interesting. I'd love to hear him talk about that sometime. I, I know this. Whatever she was thinking, she was thinking it alone. <laughs> all alone. <laughs> In a rocking chair somewhere. Mm -hmm. doing, that, doing that Whistler's Mother thing that you love so much. Hello, brother. And where were you, Gene? Where were you on 9-11? Do I answer that, Gene? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will pass. Oh, that's great. That's great. You know, that's one great thing about radio, yeah. is that you got a guy like that, who we really don't hate. We just like busting his balls, because he's like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> uh, what's great is that he... He learned about radio here at WJFK because he's learned how to hold a grudge. Yes, absolutely. And he's learned how to do exactly what we would do, and we were taught from the best, is that you go to another station, even if you're on a, a crappy AM station that nobody listens to and nobody cares about, there'll be two or three people that manage to hear it. And if you think something bad is happening to someone who you don't like, mm -hmm. man, you run with it. Yeah. You go with it. Yeah, you, you seize on that opportunity. And obviously... uh 
word of our situation with the network got back to him. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he didn't know himself, but no. somebody told him. <laughs> but but what you don't do, and I guess I'll address this to his uh, to his uh, his nurse Diana. <laughs> Is she still there? I think she's still his nurse. I believe so. Is she his nurse, yeah. His, his full-time nurse. I, I, I think what you want to do the next time you're changing him is remind him it's okay to slam us. It's okay to make fun at, at our possible termination. Just don't try to tie it into how Americans feel about 9-11. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's definitely lowbrow. I think he moved out of that nursing home and has moved back into his original one. Oh, with Francis. I believe so. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not 100% sure. I just know that he had to quietly remove items from that home. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so Oh, I heard those stories. Yeah. <laughs> I heard those stories. Lots of rumors floating around. <laughs> Lots of stuff about him. I guess the, uh, the bottom line here would be, gee, just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. Yeah, because we could do... And, Four hours on you. And regardless, on our regardless head. of how great our syndication deal is, I guarantee you old fart, you got a worse deal than we did. Are you sure, Brother Donald? And you got the bums rush out of here. <laughs> yes, just like you said your testicles were bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that that's what started him? That's what started our feud with him, and yeah. we, we patched it up, and then, you know, it was never really patched up, because I think he's a psycho. I really do. I, I, I meant it only as a kidding way of getting something going between the two shows. There was actually, I believe, another feud before that. Remember Buzz's Letterman picture? Mm -hmm. That yeah. was oh, that was yep. the first thing that started. Well, the big deal was you came on. He was talking about the size of his balls. Mm -hmm. And you got on and said, well, let's have a contest to see whose are bigger. And you were ready to whip him out. And he hated that. Wow. He said, you know, like, it's a bit. Let's just yank it like you would really do this. Mm -hmm. Let's take our balls out and get a, a, you know, a measuring stick and see who really who has the biggest balls. Well, he took great offense at this, but, and and seriously, I, for a while I was concerned that the man was going to kill me mm -hmm. because he would, you know, where's he at? Yeah. Where's he at? I'll stab him with a pencil. It gets, he started with him talking about uh, his ball reduction surgery that he said he had to have because his pants wouldn't fit. That's which, which I didn't uh, believe. Right? No one did. I which think. Which I didn't believe. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like You're he's thinking. had that surgery. Like right. That surgery exists. Right. Like all of the stuff he preaches really exists. Right. So. My, you see, my balls are so big, I had to have them surgically altered. We thought it was hysterical, and we were going to run with it right. and have a little synergy, and it unfortunately went awry. So, I've taken on three branches of the United States government. I'm not afraid of you two. <laughs> <laughs> so he's... <laughs> and then all the calls he used to get that we used to listen to every day because we were here and we couldn't get away from it. Honor and a privilege and a privilege and an honor. Oh, BS. We used to laugh so much. Jesus, give me a break. Oh, but like, good like, you know, like he was some war hero. Dr. Liddy. Good to hear from you, G. A bungled burglar. Dr. I just, burglar. I just say to G, you never know how things will turn out in this wacky business. You don't. You really don't know, G. You wait till the end. Wait till the end game. You don't know, G Money, but I make you this promise. I'll bring flowers oh, nice. when the time comes. Oh, that is nice. Or send them. No, I'll bring them. To, I'll, to the site? To the site, yeah. To the Coney Island where the ashes will be spread? <laughs> In front of tilt a whirl <laughs> I'll stand there and I'll say... For In front of that plot of ground that was so honorably defended. For a great American who defended... An amusement park that was under heavy enemy attack during World War II. A great all-American <laughs> and who stands for everything that 911 is all about. And then, then is that when you'll do the dance? <laughs> <laughs> it may be a slow dance, not a jig. You promised me a, a spirited dance years ago. Yeah, yeah you should it. really do a. Yeah, you should do the Irish step oh, dance. I do a, I do a jig. Very right. good. I'll do a jig. Excellent. And tie yourself to a tree. I'll do a jig. <laughs> Just for him. I'm afraid of lightning. Hold on, here's someone, uh, Mike. Show me the Good videotape. Man. Show me the videotape of that, too. We have someone who's now going to explain our situation with why we are on in Washington and, and maybe Baltimore on WJFK, but not on, in other places. Hello? Hello? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> How you all doing? Who is this, please? Uh, this is the Westwood One person. Really? What can we do for you? Uh, I'd like to get a website so people can listen to you all over the place. What? Hey, Tom? Yes. It's 4.43. You want to do the weather? Uh, it's 4.43. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'll play the jingle. You ready? Yeah. Here you go. Uh, go. Hey, it's sunny out there, and it's like 69 degrees outside, and 
It's going to be partly cloudy tonight. Stop now. WKFK. I think you ought to give him another crack at it. You want to try it again? Yep. You want a record afterwards? Yep. All right, sunny today. Sunny today. R rain tomorrow. Rain tomorrow. And a nice weekend, currently 78 degrees. Can you remember all that? Yeah. All right, go. Hey. Uh, hold on, hold on. You ready? Here you go. And. Okay. It's sunny today. Sunny tomorrow. No, rain tomorrow. Rain tomorrow. And. A nice weekend. 78 degrees. Nice weekend currently. on Saturday and Sunday. Current temperature, 78. Current temperature, Washington, D.C., oh, 78. So close. Yeah. So close. One more time. All right. Now, when I say go, you jump right into it, Tom. Okay. And, Tom, I don't want to give you too much, but in the middle of this weather forecast on WJFK, uh -huh. you want to say something about G. Gordon Liddy? Oh, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Go. It's sunny today. It's going to be raining tomorrow. And it's going to be a good day on Saturday. And uh, 78 uh, WJFK right. and the Washington, D.C. and G. Gordon Lenny, you suck. Hey! <laughs> All right, take it, Tom. Take it. Go. It's WJFK. Tom Gavin Show. It's the Tom Gavin Show. We have the... Fine Young Cannibals. Fine Young Cannibals. How do you spell your favorite radio station? W-E-B-R. Fairfax Radio. <laughs> and also, uh, September 21st, I'm going to be running for the board for Fairfax County Public Access. Oh, really? Uh, do you have a campaign? Do you have a poster? I'm getting, I'm getting them made. Fantastic. Tom? Yes? You can put on your poster, supported by the Don and Mike show. Yep. So you, yep. Are, you are running for office? Yep. Yep. What's the office again? Uh, it's going to be Fairfax Public Access Corporation. And you're going to be on the board of directors? Yes, I am. And it's going to be next Sunday, the 21st. What's your platform? Uh, I don't know until I get voted in. <laughs> That's just like Arnold. Just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Tom, how do you spell platform? P-A-R-T-F-O-R-M. He's very good. Part form. He's a very good candidate. Uh, can you spell politics? P O R T E N. Porton. And Tom? Yes. Not my call, but your call. I think, how about this? More parking for the handicapped. More parking for the handicapped. At... Now, wouldn't that wouldn't that help you, Tom? Yeah. Right, because you know, you don't you have one of those things in your car, one of those uh, sticker things or Yeah. on your license plate? Yes, I do. And Tom, how about this? As part of your platform, if you pull up to Giant or Safeway and someone's in those one of those spots, uh -huh. you can do anything you like to them. If you can prove that they're not crippled. I will tell them to get the heck out of there. Can you spell patriotic, please? P-A-R-T-A-R-N. Tom, wouldn't you, love, wouldn't you love to just crack someone in the head? If they I'm going to crack someone in the head with my cane. There you go. Right on, Tom. Tom, Tom yeah. one more. Yeah. Besides more handicap parking, how about putting the lead back in paint? <laughs> lead back in paint? Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. L-A-N-D. No, no, you don't have to spell it. Wait, don't need to spell it, Tom. <laughs> That's one of your platforms. You have two platform positions. <laughs> two planks. More handicap parking. More handicap parking. And put the lead back in the paint. Put lead back in the paint. Right. And you need a slogan. Yeah. Like a vote for Gavin is a vote for something. A vote for Gavin. Vote for Tom Gavin for, for board of directors from FPA. Yeah. And Whatever. Robbie. Maybe something a bit briefer. And come like on out. Tom? To Channel 10 on the 21st of September. And Tom? For Tom Gavin as a board of directors. Tom, Tom, yeah. Tommy. How about this? Gavin's worth having. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it is, Rob. Gavin? Gavin's worth having. And then make up buttons that just say, yep. Yep. <laughs> and then another one that just says, Tom, exclamation point. Tom, exclamation point. Like that. You know, that's like a little dot with a with yep. a line. Yeah. Tom! Vote Tom. Vote for Tom. Yep. No, no, simply vote Tom. Yeah. Vote Tom. Yeah. I'll be having Gavin. I will have be having Gavin. 
<laughs> Rob just came up with a great third platform. A third is plank it, in your platform. Please resume spraying DDT <laughs> for mosquitoes. DVD, more mosquitoes. There you right. go. So you've got more handicap parking. Uh -huh. you got more handicap parking. Right. Put the lead back in the paint. How about this it's one? Lead back in the paint. And resume spraying DDT for mosquitoes. How about Tom hey, hey. Gavin would make a good board member? <laughs> Tom? Yeah. Gotta go. Hey. Yeah. I got the I got the uh, the wet t-shirt um, pictures and I got a um I got a uh, it says what? Donna Mike Rock. What's the site, Tom? It says Donna Mike Rock on it. D and M Rock. It's a, it's a license plate. I like to bring it in and sure. give Come it to you all. Come on in, Tom. I gotta go. Bye. Okay. Bye. There he goes, and he's gone like the wind. Rob, I'll give you another platform. <laughs> yeah. A platform item. These are all part of his platform. Mm -hmm. In the platform. Go ahead, Rob. In the platform. Go ahead. Half price pictures for all pregnant women. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's 4.49 on WJFK. And uh, during that, who's uh, Bart's on the Bart's telephone? on the warm line for you. Here he is now from Clemson, South Carolina. The uh, the freshman sensation sweeping the nation. <laughs> Bart, hey, bud. I just wanted to see how Uncle Mike felt right now. Why? Did you just go ahead of me or what? Yep. I won the game last week. How did that work out? You just why, why on Thursday do we have to wait to see if the it's goddamn because, game was... I had a Charlie Tuesday morning because there was a fumble on the last play of the game. And the scoring was messed up so that the fumble wasn't counting or something. And that means not only... Do you lose your fantasy football wait, game? Wait, you wait. You owe my father $20. Yes, when, wait a minute. When does this be... When are games official? Charlie, would you please step up as... Here we go. The WJFK Buzz had the first pick last year league. I mean, I looked at it today. You said Wednesday is the day usually that it's done, right? Right. That's well, right. What happened? There was a fumble recovered by Tampa's defense that he didn't get credit for. Well, well how come it wasn't, uh, wasn't I reflected? I have no idea. I have nothing to do with their server. Did you do anything? Did you get involved in it at all, Mr. Commissioner? Yes, I did. Who did yes. you contact? A CBS Sports Line. Okay. They're the ones that supply us with the service. Mm -hmm. See, I think it's just that we ought to just leave it on the server, and no matter, and we just let the chips it's, fall where that's they... That's what's happened now. It's changed. Yeah, okay. it would change the after they, that Would it have changed if you hadn't made the call? Probably not. But now, here's a question. For everybody... Uh, that's playing fantasy football on CBSSportsLine.com. Would they all have gotten gypped out of that one point for Tampa Bay if they had depends Tampa how, Bay? It depends how their leagues were set up. Uh, well, Barty, congratulations. I told Thank you. you. I told you all. I, uh, You're I'm sorry. The twenty dollar gift. No, father. no. I, I, I am not going to pay the bet, and I, I am lodging a formal no, protest no, with the no, commissioner. No, no, no. This is not right. This is too late. You I are crooked. This. The results on Wednesday are the results that I will stand by. I lodge a protest. A season-long protest. <laughs> that is all there is to it. <laughs> has to start already. I want to say that this this is not only bad. I will actually have a good. I will have my moment, as your son had his moment. I will have my moment speaking with the commissioner, Charlie. Yes. We'll talk after the show. Very good. Ah! Bart, you're implying that Bart did something. Bart did not pay Charlie. I am implying nothing of the kind. Bart, I am glad that you beat Uncle Mike fair and square in our fantasy football league. We, I will be the final judge of that. And I will have a lengthy, lengthy discussion with the commissioner following the game. And uh, let's just consider that $20 in escrow. <laughs> no, let's consider that $20 in my hand. Uh, you know, I, I, never, I am not a bet welcher, and I am fully... Intent on uh, after I review. You're not the about logistics. Go to the site. I uh, well, I did go to the site. I went to the site this morning. I said, well, go that right must now. be it. That must be it. Go, go right now. Go right now. No, I'm not going standing. right now. No, you are no. Both, both of you. Place, my both of you. You lost the game. You no, lost I to my not. son. I did not. You lost fantasy football to my son. He beat nope. 61. If it can change, you know, the, first of all, the games were concluded on Monday night, mm -hmm. Tuesday. Uh, it was 61 to 60. Then it Charlie, went back to 60. Get, Wednesday, it was 60 to 60. Could you get morning, somebody, it was 60 to 60. And it could change tomorrow. Could but it get, won't, though. It could go back to 60 to 60. Could you get I'll somebody? He's available. Get the guy from CBS Sports Line to talk to Mike. Would I get the same consideration? No. What? I would not get the same. Would you go to the website and get the same consideration? No. I will have a talk with Charlie okay. after the game. Do well, you think Barch is getting special consideration? Uh, uh, no, I'm not saying special consideration. I'm saying, would you contact... If it was you, you would be doing the same thing. No, no if it was me, I'd do the same thing as Bart did. Mm -hmm. I did to Charlie. 
Because because of this. Well, I'm going to. And as I said, I haven't even paid attention. I just looked at the. I accepted it, and I will just review the details. You know what you are. <laughs> I'm not going to say this today because you, we're having a tough day. Yes. You're like a jelly product. You're like a brand of juice. Jelly product. What you is are. a jelly product? I'm not going to say. Grape wine? Yeah, I'm not going to. I wasn't. Gonna I say am it. not a welcher. I, I have wasn't. never welched on a bit on this show. You're welching right now because what you would do is. No, I'm simply reviewing. You would pay the statistics with a fine tooth comb pay as my opponent this weekend did. Pay me the twenty dollars, and if in fact it turns out that somehow CBSSportsLine.com says you won, I give it back to you. Done. I, and uh, that, uh, right? Excuse me. The excuse yes. me, son. Hold on, Uncle Mike's going to do the stand-up thing. I will, I will, and, and if there is any change, that's I can accept that. Then I would. There is your, there is your shiny twenty-dollar bill. And you're no longer Welch's. Now you're Smuckers. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> you move back to there. You go. God, I really, I really looked at that this morning and said, "Man, we're tied. That's good. We're tied. It's a good start to the season." It's like, how, that, it's, I'm sorry, but it does suck. I got it, the does, call. it sucks for me because you know what? I thought I had a tie. You would think effing Thursday. After the the games are, you Mike, know, think of the first three letters of our fantasy football league, though. The, our, yeah, you're right. Supplier. You're absolutely. It sucks. We did it on CBS. It sucks so totally. this year. We did it on CBS. It's faster this though this year. Not well, no, not well, not in uh, your no game. No wonder. Of course, faster. you're happy about it. You won your game. Okay, now it sucks faster. It All right, bud. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, so what that means is <laughs> we are all in the same boat. Everybody in the Super Bowl: Don, Mike, Buzz, Rob, and Charlie. We all lost our fantasy games this weekend. Yep. Winners this weekend were John Norman, Cameron Gray, <laughs> Big Gum Jim, Lisa Marie, and Bart. Those are your winners this weekend. Are you sure the Baltimore defense didn't recover 65 fumbles? Could you double check on I'll that? Check. Thank you. <laughs> all right, to me after Mike talks to me. You know what? I can't because I don't go through it with a fine tooth comb. No. And it sucks. I think Charlie's on the level with you. I do. One I game. A young season, Mike. It is a young season. I will come back. But Mark, I will come back. Congratulations. And remember, your father had faith in you. I know you did that. And if and if, if you get that tar, that car towed again. Tar towed? <laughs> I am not, I'm not paying. All right. Okay. Even Eddie didn't know you weren't allowed to park there. I know. Even Eddie. Oh, and can I tell you, have I told you the scam going on down at Clamson? No, 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 no. You don't want, you don't want me to talk about no, that? No, 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 no. It's, it's funny. No, Dad, no. All right, I won't. Won't be heard down there. It's funny. Yeah, no one down there would hear it. No, Dad, no. Okay, you got it. No problem. I love you. I'll see you later, son. If I tell you why, will you beep it out? Well, I know that that's what's happening. I don't want to ruin it. Okay, I got you. And I'm sorry, everybody listening on JFK, I had to do delete out what Bart was just saying. First of all, uh, it's a part about college life. Mm hmm you know, the part you deleted out was the part where he said he really does believe that Uncle Mike won fair and square. <laughs> no, I know. Tied him fair and square. All right, fun. bud. Don't worry. All right. Maybe after this semester I'll talk about it. Or maybe I'll talk about it. How long until you're 21? Three years? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, I'll see you later. All right. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Damn it. I told him he's old enough now where he's like, he's no longer your son to me. He's a, yeah. he's, today you are a man, and man, I, I looked at it today and I had this little satisfaction. I said, oh, well, it's Thursday, and, uh, the last day that anything could change was, uh, was, was Wednesday, so I said, I got a 60 to 60 tie. It's yeah, just, he, it's, it really, you know, I'm not into it anyway as much as everybody else is, and now this just makes me, almost, us, almost takes the wind out of my sails. He called us this morning, and the call was two part. First it was, Mom, Dad, and I guess these are the only calls you get from your kid now when they're in college. We have to break? We should. Let me just do... Well, hi, Charlie. I want, this w really would have taken the wind out of your sails. Last week, no one wanted me to remind you to put in your roster. <laughs> I think it's too, too early oh, I know Mike that. to completely... I know. I know. See, Carrie, this... Carrie Collins, LaDainian Thomason, Edger and James... Darren. No, but you didn't have it in the computer. No, I'm talking about this week. You didn't have it in the computer on time last week. Who's the guy for? Uh, I got uh, Isaac Bruce. I got. Uh, so there was conversation. Should should yeah. we tell Mike as a league? Conrad. Should we, should we tell him that his roster Bain? is not in in time for the first game? Conrad Bain. I know it's a it's a horrible league that just s's on me every year. <laughs> Listen, I love it, and I got killed last week by 50 points. What the hell? Yeah. What the hell? 
What else do we got to live for? That's just one. You know what? And you know it's not Bart's fault. It's not your fault. It's not Charlie's fault. You know whose fault it is? It's the effing Philadelphia suck eagles. So today we get this call from Bart. One of the few calls that you get. <laughs> or you know what? What I'm just going to do? Yeah. We'll take a short break and a do minute. So goddamn it, don't tune the station out because we'll be back in like... Maybe two minutes. Faster than you're used to. Okay. I'll be right back on JFK. Expedia. Told you it'll go away. Five o'clock. JFK. That's strange. That's what's nice about being local. Yeah. I mean, eventually, if we ever were to work anything out with the network, hopefully we'd be able to have it like that, where we'd say, we're gonna, you know, we'd tell them in advance, we're going to break in two minutes, but come back. Mm -hmm. So people don't tune out during the commercials. That'd be great. Okay, so... Uh, here's what it was very briefly. Uh, and really not a great story, I'll tell you that up front. Just an exercise. That, a warning for the network. that would be a warning for the network, too, if we were on the, the network. That you would say not a great story, that would be a warning. That, no, 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 no. That's no, a no. joke. That was no, a joke. That's a, no, and that, so was this. Right. Well, no, not really, because it's really not. It was just an exercise for you guys on, on 106.7 to see if you would really stay there for two minutes. Right. Because our breaks are going to be shorter or longer today, depending on how we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get the call. What, Robbie? It was only a minute 15. Wow. I thought I was really short. That was short. Well, then welcome to those of you who actually took me out my word and said we'd be back in two minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. So we found the types of calls that we get now from my kid are mainly when something's gone wrong. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, the washing machine wouldn't work or whatever. We get the call today, this morning, 10 o'clock. Good morning. Hi. My car was towed. Why was your car towed? Because it was parked illegally. Since when? Since last Saturday. Since, since last Saturday? It's Thursday. I said, I know. I don't have any money. I said, I guess you're walking. <laughs> I guess you're walking. And then he pulls out, Mom told me that she'd take care of it. <laughs> and I said, okay, hold on. And I get Frida on the phone. And, you know, we got now, now we have to, we have to give him. What, she was going to drive down there and move his car? No, we, <laughs> she was going to put some money in his account. Okay. So that he could afford to have the car towed out. Right. So she and I are going through the, the debate with him, and we finally have to take him on his word. And it's entirely possible, because he does call us at odd hours, like 2 in the morning. It is entirely possible that he called me while I was dead asleep mm -hmm. and, and said on Saturday night or Sunday morning, Dad, my, tar my car got towed. Would you pay for it? And I said, yes. I want to say that's entirely possible. I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. So I get my wife on the phone, and I say, I'm not going to pay for this. He said, but you said, you, one of, and that, now he's changed it to one of you guys said. <laughs> so she picks up the phone, and, and I go, do you remember telling him that? And she says, absolutely not. He says, well, Dad, then it must have been you. Now, but, and, but because the phone is on my side of the bed, mm -hmm. yeah. and if he calls in the middle of the night, there have been previous times that he's called. This could be a strategy for him calling in the I, middle of the night. And mm -hmm. I've talked to him, and I really don't retain it because I'm so deep asleep. Right. I've got such good R REM happening. <laughs> so I finally had to say, okay, I'll give it to you. I'll take it your word, but I'm not going to pay for it again. So being as that part of the conversation was over, that we were going to pay the $50, whatever it is, to get the, his car towed from college. You mean said, towed back out? Yeah, because it was, it was in an impound lot. Oh, okay, get it, get it out of the lot. He says, immediately because the business is done, right. his, you know, we, he's gotten his pound of flesh from us. He says, I can't talk. I got to go. Click. So we both hang up the phones and just go, oh, you know, <laughs> crazy kids. Phone rings again. <laughs> Caller ID, it's him. Dad. I go, Bart. And he goes, I am so pissed. I said, what are you pissed about? Mom's going to, you're mm -hmm. calling five seconds later. Right. And how is mom supposed to put the money in your account in five days? Not about that. The CBS Sports Line still says that I'm tied with Uncle Mike. <laughs> and I know that I won that game because Tampa Bay had one more fumble or whatever it is. Right, and I, and right. I, and I said, you're talking to the wrong person. Talk to Broyhill. Talk to Bro and then he said, did Uncle Mike give you the money? And I said, no. He said, why didn't you get the money from Uncle Mike? I said, because it's a push. I said, I didn't bet Uncle Mike that he was not going to win the game. Yeah. I bet Uncle Mike that you were going to win. And because it appears to be a tie, it's a push. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, that sucks. <laughs> and I said, let's stop and, and examine this conversation today. <laughs> First you call, you get your car towed, you tell us about it five days later, you don't have any money, 
You call us up, you beg for the money, we give it to you, then you say, okay, you got to go. Then you call back and you're busting my balls about the scoring system on a fantasy football league. And I swear to you, he said, I love you, I got to go. Click. <laughs> <laughs> that, was it. that was it, and he's gone. And he's he's gone. out of there. He's out of there. So now I do have the 20, but if it does change back... Right, because, I'll get my 20 back. Because it's CBS Sports Line, you'll get it back. Yeah, but I mean, I just think that I, I wish that we had... This happens every year, and I wish that we had a system that, that when you woke up on Tuesday morning, you went to it, and it was done. It's and never it never that. is like that. It sucks. It's, there's a couple flaws with the system. Another thing is that when you start out every game, your defense automatically has like 40 points because you haven't given up the yards. Mine had 70 to start with. That's, yeah, it's different this year. Last year, I think it was 45. Mm -hmm. but so, so, so those so, points you lose. So you turn point. the screen on and it shows is that you, new this year? It shows you're winning 120 to 0. Right. Like, All right. You, you go... Man, you know, my, my... Yeah, see, the whole defense thing sucks. My man must have had a great day. All right, well, anyway, that's what I had to say right. to my son. And we did that after a minute and 15 of commercials because we can do that today. Very cool. Because we're local. <laughs> we can do that. On WJFK. Yes, we can. And I'll say this, as, 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 as squeamish as I was feeling two hours ago, I'm feeling rather comfortable now. Yeah, I, I like it. It's kind of goofy. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Nice. It almost makes me wish those other people don't come back. Don't tell them that. No. Because I like them. I know. I do, too. Not I, me. I'm not you. I know you don't. <laughs> Thank God for you, Rob. 506. <laughs> WJFK FM. Negative equity applies to new loan balance. Hey, good for them for not speeding that up at the end. Negative equity applies to new loan balance. A lot of times they go, uh, you know, much, much faster than that. Yes. Negative equity. Uh, JFK, hello. Hey, Doc. Eric. Let me just mention that I, I, I had heard Bart tell you on the air uh, about the towing of, of, of his car. Yeah, I, uh, I, we had a lot of calls now from people that when he was on the air earlier, he had, he had mentioned that. See, sometimes, but I, sometimes with me, there's, there's show me and then there's real me. Yeah, like remembering stuff. Did you say you'd take care of it? I believe I did. Mm. Didn't I? I didn't hear it. We didn't hear it? Well, how did you know about it? No, I heard that. He said that it was towed, but not that you would take care of it. Oh, all right. Thank you. Hold on. Here's someone else. Josh, Don and Mike, JFK. Josh! Josh! Josh. What's up? I'm just calling to second that guy's uh, comment. I'll hang up now. Well, no, hold on. Give me some background, though. Uh, your son called, uh, this, I can't remember the exact day, but it was, I think it was earlier this week or maybe last week. I mean, if I'm losing, to... if I'm losing my mind, and today I know I am, but if I'm really losing my mind, please help me. Ah, uh, I think you may be losing your mind. I'm not sure. Your son had his car parked at the stadium, it's from what I remember, and it got towed because of the game. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's right. Why was he parked at the stadium? Uh, I believe he was parked it there. I'm not sure. Don may be able to answer this better. He, but he parked, parked uh, left it there. in a spot that wasn't a, a space they had, you know, for the, the games at Clemson. They get 80,000 people coming yeah. there to Death Valley, and he had parked in a spot that wasn't actually a spot. Uh, Charlie, you want to wait until after the traffic? Oh, of course. All right, thanks. Hey, listen, thank you. Yep. Hold you, on. you have anything for me? He's, he's got something to say. Mm. Um, <laughs> you have one dinner. Hey, what's your name, sir? Mm. Oh, all right. He's gone. F you. <laughs> 516. Here's Washington, D.C. traffic at JFK. Accident Georgetown Pike at Old Dominion. Westbound held up. Eastbound has to turn onto Old Dominion. I uh, use Route 7 at the toll road. 66. Pretty good pace, actually, out past Nutley Street. Heavier at 123 and out in Manassas. The outer with delays before Route 1 at last check to the Wilson Bridge. 95 southbound before you reach 644 to south of the Beltway. It's a tractor trailer stopped and broken down in the center of the roadway. That's what jams off the Beltway. No troubles to tell you about on the inner loop through Bethesda Silver Spring. Just slow traffic now from Old Georgetown Road East. Then leaving College Park down to a car broken down after the BW Parkway before Route 450. It's in the left lane. Accident on the outer loop before Route 1 College Park at Green Belt Metro is now on the shoulder, but you're slow from Route 50 to John Hanson Highway. Traffic for update brought to you by Sunoco. You know, now only at Sunoco, everyone who applies for a Sunoco credit card will be rewarded with a coupon book worth over $150 in savings. See participating Sunocos for details. I'm Vera Abruptly, Don and Mike Show, WJFK. Thank you, baby. WJFK. Hi, baby. I'm coming to your corporate headquarters. My plane gets in at two, and we'll sit in this deodorant thing face to face like men. What's your last name again, Phil? All right. I'll see you in five hours, Mr. Lacio. WJFK. Right. The Don and Mike Show. Clemson.
closing your ears with a verbal enema. Don and Mike. Before Charlie makes his announcement, and before we do it, we, we do the Arnold thing here. 520, no, 57, 517 on 106.7. I think we should take a couple of these calls from outside the market where people are asking uh, if we've walked off okay, or if they're being punished. That'll be very good. Uh, let's talk to Eric. Eric. Yeah, how's it going? Eric, I see on the uh, screen it says, are we being punished? The answer is the decision to have this show not be on the network today was not our decision. Not our decision. And we are here uh, doing a show in Washington, D.C. We're doing a live show today. Even yeah. though even though you guys came in live for just, a, just at the opening of the show? And we don't know what West... That was somebody else's boner. We, didn't we, do don't, that know, either. we don't know what Westwood <laughs> One did. Westwood One, and not just some lackey, a big, a big jerk face at Westwood One <laughs> told our big jerk face... Today, they're just going to run a best of on the network. And then right before we went on the air, we were told... No, actually, when we were on the air, we somebody called and said, you're live, and then our agent called us and said... Or did you call our agent? No, uh, we went to commercials <laughs> immediately, which was my, my first reply. And, and he called and, uh, us and said, uh, yeah, he got a, uh, email an email saying we should be... I have uh, a question. Yeah. I have a question. Is he bleeding in his stool? <laughs> He's bleeding in a lot of stools. Thank a lot you, of blood and a lot of stools. Right, let's yeah. see. Here's Tim in Bakersfield. Let's see. Uh, Tim, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, Don, I did. It clears up a lot of things. But I'll tell you this. The, the, whoever, was, whoever made the decision sure made you guys look like you had egg on your face. And uh, don't doubt that they did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. That they just, you know, our, our thing is, you know... It's okay. Lie to us once. Okay. Lie to us twice. What's that thing? Lie, lie to me once. Okay. Shame second on time, shame on, shame on you. Right. Shame on me. We I realized we realized we were being caught in something. We go to a commercial break. Now, they could have come back. The Westwood one could have come back when we were on. They're running on a delay. So uh, they... We just thought that it was going to be done a certain way going in, and it wasn't. And, and then they you know, we don't know why that is either. Yeah. And then we try to call our guy, and our guy's playing golf. Anyway, sorry about that. It's not really it's not our choice. I understand. It's just that you know I've got such a serious Jones for your show. It's hard to miss it. Appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. You bet. Good luck with that serious Jones. See ya. You bet. Today heard exclusively on 106.7 WJFK. Don and Mike show. And now is this an announcement about fantasy football or about radio? Uh, fantasy football. Here now is commissioner of the Buzz had the first pick last league uh, last year Here's league mm -hmm. Charlie Boyle. Charlie. I look back over the scores for everybody, not just Mike oh, and Bart, but your defense, in fact, did have a fumble recovery, so they're tied again. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I'm not. Because I didn't, you know, I, I made that big deal about <laughs> no, talking I, to Charlie during the break. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't talk anything. to Charlie yeah, during the break. Comes the 20. No. And when you came in here, I did not th We're tied again? Yeah. 6160. 6161. 6161. Let me try him on his cell if I can't get it. Did you <laughs> yeah. try him in his dorm? Yeah, I'll, I'll try again. Yeah. And Mike got, I'm sorry, Buzz got a point. Have you spoken to Bart? No. Okay. That's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him now. All right. Hey, I, he probably won't pick up his cell. I got one more point? Yes, you did. Yay. Does that affect the outcome? No. Oh. <laughs> Not even close. As did John. I thought that Mighty Dolphins defense. Hello? <laughs> Hey Bud. Hey Bart, how yeah. you doing? We have uh, Charlie has some news for you. Hey Bart, what? Charlie's got something he wants to tell you. Um, Mike's New England Patriot defense also recovered a fumble. Really? Yes. Which means we're tied at sixty-one now. And I had to give Uncle Mike the do the twenty dollars back. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, and and you know, Barty, many people are calling now and saying that you said on the air something about your car, and that I said okay. I didn't say you couldn't talk about the car. No, 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 no. I know you didn't say that. Never mind. You don't know what I'm talking about. He's in a state of shock yeah. with the news that he's just received. Hello, um, Pat. You're on the air with Don and Mike, and Bart's on the phone from college. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, they replayed it on Sunday when Bart called about his car. Yeah. And he told you it was towed because of the football game. And then you said, well, you know what you can do about that, don't you? And he said, what? And you said, talk to your mother. And he said, we'll do. Okay, well... <laughs> Thank you. Sounds thank right. you, darling. But it's already been taken care of, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 But well, he was know. right. One of them took care of it. And Mike just got his $20. And you, hey, hold on there, lady. Mm -hmm. I want to give you something. Oh, could he? Uh, here you go. 
Thank you. I, 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 I dare you to go to Applebee's <laughs> oh, no. and eat as no. many as you possibly no. can in their never-ending basket of slow-smoked ribs. Please, something else. Why do you want something else? Uh, no, that'll be good. That'll you don't be, dig on swine? That'll be just great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Darling, it's a never-ending basket of slow-smoked ribs smothered in sweet and tangy BBQ sauce. I just love it. Are you Bart? having a hot flash now? No. <laughs> Bart, did you just hang up? Apparently so. Well. I don't hear Bart. Yeah, hold on a sec. You know, that's just, that's rude and rude. <laughs> rude and rude. <laughs> Maybe Bart would like the ribs. You don't want the ribs? I'll give them to Bart. Or are you are you on a diet? Yeah. Ah, really? How how no. how big would you be? No, no, no. <laughs> hey, I was doing you a favor. <laughs> yeah, he, he, she was helpful. Bart would That's why Don gave you a prize. Bart, right. Bart, right. Bart would like him because he's in college. Oh, yeah, he's got enough love. junk in college. Static voice message system. Oh, there we go. Bart. Bart. Not available. Bart. Tone. Please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To choose a short message to be displayed on the cellular phone of the person. Don't you hate this when you just can't get right to voicemail? Yeah. I hate that thing with just to choose a short... Hey, Bart. You hung up, son. And you hung up on this nice lady who Bart, called... Do you like ribs, Bart? This this nice lady who called. <laughs> nice lady with a funny voice. Nice yeah. lady who called and heard the replay of the show on Sunday <laughs> when you did tell me about your car, and I said you know how to handle that. Ask mom. It seems that Aunt B listens to the show very closely. <laughs> so you're off the hook, bud. I love you, but don't be so rude next time. I'll see you later. Bye. All right, and you lady, now do you want this Applebee's thing or do you want something else? Sure. Okay, there you go. Enjoy from Applebee's. Does that mean sure she wants the Applebee's thing or sure she wants something else? Sure. <laughs> she wants something else. I want to get off the phone because you called me Aunt B. She wants to get off the phone. Oh, we called you Aunt B. We don't mean anything. Me she wants to Aunt get Aunt off the phone. Get off, babe. <laughs> Who is the celebrity you most resemble? <laughs> not going to play that game. Oh, okay. Oh. No. No. All right. Bye. Bye. Hold on a second. Okay, okay, okay. For your Applebee's. Okay. 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 Uh, like she will, <laughs> Hold like, on, Lulu. Like she won't be here. <laughs> like she won't be here in six minutes to pick it up before the close of business today. <laughs> you okay. said it was never ending. So here's the hotline. Hello. Sorry, Pops. My uh, phone died out. I'm in my room. Oh, that's okay. Ah. All right. Uh, anyway, the lady, did you get my message? Which one? I just left you a message. Where? On your cell. No, I haven't gotten it yet. Okay. The message said, uh, I thought you had hung up, and the lady on the phone, this lady uh, who's on her way down here right now <laughs> to get her Applebee stuff, she called in to say that on the show, when they replayed it on Sunday, mm -hmm. and incidentally, I, I appreciate the fact that they've cut down on the, the, the replays on the weekend, yeah. but can we get a better time than when football's on? Mm -hmm. Can we get it? Because it was on Sunday afternoon. I know. I it's frustrating. I mean... They finally get it down to four hours a week, and then they put it on when football's on. So who's going to be... Who's, well, that lady was listening. Yeah. Anyway, she called to say that when, when you called earlier this week, you told me about it, and I said, ask mom. So you're off the hook on that. Awesome. So you remember this morning when you said, I promise one of you guys said it. Yeah, I talked to one of you. I knew I did. I know, and I just, you know, it's, take it your word. All right, I love you. Have a good night tonight. All right. All right, I'll see you. Bye. You would not believe how things are going here. <laughs> oh, it's just incredible. Great. We're having one wacky show. It's so much fun. Autopilot. Autopilot. <laughs> All right. Bye, son. Love you. There you go. WJFK 5, 526. Uh, without the, uh, without the, the bed, it's going to be cloudy tonight, low 62. Rain tomorrow, high 70. But Buzz is promising a nice weekend. Promise. And it's 76 uh, right now. We have, we have time. For, you know, we have, time for, we have time for plenty of stuff. I keep thinking because we're so locked into this network thing. Yeah, it's weird. Isn't that we've got to stop and, and do a break. We don't. No, we don't. We don't. We do a show. We can just keep it. This is good for people listening on WJFK. I'm sorry that I'm this realizing is good. as we're going along. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm realizing this as we're going along, but I'm so used to saying, oh, got a break here, got a break here. You right. can do anything you want. We could play a commercial, do 90 no. seconds of content, another commercial, or we can go for another 10, 15 minutes if you want. No, great, because we'll do this, and then we'll give away the WWE thing. Uh, now, uh, we've not had uh, this guy on our show. For, I don't know, since we've been back from vacation, mm -hmm. we were all over this before we were on uh, on vacation. And as it turns out, it's, it's sad he's coming by today because today he's not going to be heard in California. Although I think he thinks he's going to be heard in California. Ladies and gentlemen, the next governor of the state of California...
Card six. Card six. That's the button I pressed. No. How are you doing? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Where's my PA system? I thought I was going to have the reverb and be able to address the citizens of the audience. Can you give me the fake reverb here? Thank you, Shane. All right, hold on. How are you, Don? I'm doing great. And you, Arnold? I'm great. He it might have a little egg on my face. But citizens of California, this is the future governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, saying... Jay Davis, Davis doesn't, doesn't know what he's talking about. about. A vote, a vote for, for Arnold, Arnold is a vote, a vote for, for a better California. California. So, so I'd like to implore you, especially, especially those of you listening right now in Sacramento, on KHTK, vote for Arnold so I can live among you. Arnold? Dankeschön. Arnold, now it wasn't our choice today, but we are not on in any part of, of California right now. How's that? You're well, telling me you're not on? Why not? It's an internal problem we're having with Westwood One. I had had internal problems. problems. I'm familiar with with, you with my heart surgery when they cut me open and performed that. That was an internal problem, but right now I'm very excited. The campaign is working on all cylinders. We are getting great responses from all the people in California. Can I turn this, can I turn this thing off? Yeah, you? sit down if I can. Yeah. <laughs> you want Farewell, citizens. Of California. California, your Joe governor has, has spoken. spoken. Okay, turn it off now. <laughs> there you go. How are you doing, huh? You having a good time? So you. And I'm about the most popular candidate that they, they get in the in the thing. The, mm -hmm. the, you big lug. The, 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 uh, yeah, I, I tell you that I go out on the stump. Which is, um, this stomp is the thing that you go to the different, uh, uh, shopping centers and you talk to the people and uh, they all love me. They think that I'm the greatest. They think I'm going to be the next governor of California. Now, uh, here's one question. I know that you're getting asked a lot. Yeah, well, you have said that you are, uh, for immigrants. I'm more popular than Gavin. You said that you're four immigrants. <laughs> yeah. You were an immigrant. I was yourself. an immigrant. I came to yeah. this country with the promise that if you work hard, you get all you can. Yet you want to take away, I don't necessarily disagree with this, you don't want illegals who have driver's license. No, they should not be driving. I mean, I mean said they should go through the proper channels That's a conflict. of California law and get the, the, the driver's licenses legally how do you after get a, they become citizens. How do you get a driver's license? I don't know. You, yeah. go, you go down, have your picture taken, you take a test. And, what uh, kind of a test? The driving test. Where would you take where would you take this test? At the building where they have the the cars. <laughs> the, no. The you take the test at the at the town at the <laughs> town hall. At the town hall? Where the where the offices are. And what kind of test do they give you? Driving. They say, How do you drive? And you tell them, you know, you get in, turn the uh key to the the right direction to start the engine, then put the foot on the pedals. And uh, proceed. I don't know. When's the How did you get? Do you have a California driver's license? I have a valid California driver's license that says Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's why I'm I'm good at uh, driving too. I have a, I drive a Hummer. <laughs> How did you get the license? I took the test. I think. I don't remember clearly. I believe I was tested at the Reichstag. <laughs> I think no. that's where I was. No. I went down to the Reichstag. <laughs> I want to tell you that. We've, I to want get to... the test, and then I goose stepped out of there. <laughs> I, want, I want to tell you that yeah, a, a favorite gag that we've not gotten to in a long time was where you call celebrities, these Hollywood celebrities. That's no gag. And you the, ask for their support. The fact of the matter is the only celebrity that's contributed to the Arnold Schwarzenegger campaign is my good friend Kelsey Grammer, who says I'd make a great governor of California, and I'm happy that uh, he's doing that. And I want to say, Kelsey, you, you, you go, I might make him a member of my cabinet. I might make him health minister. You're going to make more. Reichstag. You're going to make more celebrity calls today. My Reich, I mean my government. To get celebrities on your side. Will be. Yes, I've got to make a few. I've got the black book. Would you like to see it? I see. You can't right. have it because if you got your hands on it, you're a big high power disc jockey to make all the calls to my private numbers that I've got of all these celebrities. Look at that. I call one right now. Look at that, pretty man. <laughs> 
That's it. I'm going to call this one right now. Hold on. This, I heard a rumor that this guy is uh, really, really into my show. Because he's into fighting crime. Like well, I did. I've got to take this off the air so that we don't, we don't break the FCC rule. Right. Hello, who am I speaking to? Is this the lady of the house? <laughs> Hi, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bronson. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yes, we did meet at that party. Yes, I'm a big fan of uh, of the Death Wish movies and the. the... Uh, listen, I might be. Uh, you might be aware of the fact that I'm running for governor of California. <laughs> right. Yes, and I understand that you. Uh, your family's a Republican household? That's good. I was wondering if there's a chance that I could speak with Charles Bronson and, and I could see about maybe him getting involved in my camp. Oh, you don't know. Hello? You don't know. Oh. <laughs> when? But, oh. Well, I hope, yeah, I understand. What? Yeah, that's, that I would have loved to have him part of the campaign. Oh, my God. There you go. <laughs> It, was it painful? Oh. I'm very sorry. I, I thought he was still alive. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> he was great in the House of Wax. <laughs> Don't get shy. Thank you, Mrs. Bronson. I remember that, Rob. The House of Wax. I will say, I will say my prayers with you. Yes, my prayers are deeply with you. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, my God. <laughs> So, so Don, you didn't, yeah. The guy that was in Jetwish, uh, Charles Bronson, died. Yeah. yeah. He's dead as a doornail. He was in his 80s. Call another one. Okay. Call another one. Let's go. This, oh, this is going to be a good one. This isn't a big star. Not a big star? No. Huh. Right. Not a big star. Well, we got right through. But then again, we got right through to the widow Bronson. Hello, Larry. Oh, this isn't Larry. Larry is, is Larry Hovis there? Oh. I need to speak with Larry Hovis. The guy that played Carter on Hogan's Heroes. This is the housekeeper. Yeah. Um, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm running for governor of California, and I'm wondering if there's a chance I can speak with the fabulous character actor Larry Hovis. He's... What? Oh, my God. When did it happen? That's a fresh one, incidentally. Just I'm now. so sorry. Just today, I believe. Yes. I'll send some flowers. Well, I, I would appreciate you, the housekeeper. I would I appreciate the vote for you, for me as governor of California. And please express my deepest sympathies to the, uh, yeah. I always wanted him in my stalag. Okay. Thanks a lot. I'll send some flowers to the Reichstag. Oh, my God. Goodbye. Hey, Don. Yeah, Arnold. You know the guy that was on the Hogan's Heroes that played Carter? The goofy guy that was uh, the little skinny fellow? Yeah. He passed on. You're kidding me. He died. You're kidding me. No, this one's going to work, though. You because I've only gone with actors, but I want to get into the world of All right. the music. Hold on. Oops. I know, the, I know both these people. This should be really good. Go. All right. I'll give you one more shot here. Uh, You're listening yeah. to Arnold Schwarzenegger once again calling his celebrity friends. Hello. Mrs. Zivon. Oh. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. I'm... Oh, thank you. Oh, it's good to hear from you. Yeah, well, even though I called you, you've called and talked to me sometimes, right? Nine? Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen. Um, I'm, I'm having some trouble getting celebrities to join the bandwagon for me and my roast uh, for the good, for governorship of California. And I'm wondering if there's a chance I could speak with Warren and he could maybe get... He... This is he... the worst one. What? This is the worst one. Oh, he did? <laughs> For a long time? Oh, oh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. That's a, that's a great tragedy. I love the Werewolves. I love the Werewolves song. It was great because we, you know, those originated in New Germany with the Werewolves. Yeah. Oh, there will be weeping in the beer garden tonight. I'm sorry, Mrs. Eva. I didn't know. Okay. I will say a prayer for you. <laughs> That's, a... <laughs> That's a new touch. Oh, my God. What, Arnold? <laughs> Warren Zevon is dead. What? Yeah. You're kidding. The excitable boy is no longer with us. You're 0 for 3 again. I am so incredibly depressed. This is really bothering me. I don't understand why... Someone must be fooling me in my campaign for the governorship of California. That's why they give me all these names of dead people. 
I think it's a joke. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. And when I do, they won't have time to breathe. Because I will reach into the chest and grab out their beating heart as it still beats. I am so angry. I am one blue Bavarian. <laughs> Arnold, as always, thank you for coming by for this edition of Ask the Candidates. Oh, my God. What a scary world we live in. And hey, everybody listening in Sacramento right now. We're not on in Sacramento. Whatever. <laughs> A fetal thing. Oh, there he goes. Goodbye to you, Arnold. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to wait for him. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was the one that put us over the top today was the guy from Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. Because we had Bronson. Right. right. We had Zevon. It's like playing cards. We didn't have Hovis though. We got we had Hovis. we had a pair. Right. Hovis. You know. Now we got we now we got a pair with a wild card. <laughs> oh, oh, the dude from Hogan's Heroes is dead. Right. Hovis on the zoo. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure that out at five thirty eight WJFK. Hello. Yeah, Don Mike. Yes, we are. Yeah, this is Sean in Baltimore. How you doing? Hi, Sean. Uh, two things, real quick, just to jump back a little bit. Your son's car was towed Saturday, right? No, no, let's move ahead, Sean. Well, I was just saying, how did you listen to the replay on Sunday if it was towed on Saturday? I believe you he guys did. aren't on. No, no, he 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 did park it in the lot earlier in the week, mm -hmm. and because it was a football weekend, he was supposed to move it before the game on Saturday. Oh, okay. All right. I, I was just with the replay. I'm like, wait a minute, kind of got me a little confused. Right. The other mm -hmm. thing, glad we still have you guys on up here in Baltimore. Yeah, I, I don't know how they're working that. But, but I, isn't thanks. isn't your Baltimore station like a sister station, not a hey, uh, sir? part of the agreement? Sir? No, they, no, they're not. Yes, they are, but no, they're not. I have a question for you, sir, in Baltimore. Yes. Don't you wish Hovis was still here? <laughs> yes. Good. Do you know which one he was? So what was that again? Right, right. Hi, Don and Mike, JFK. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, do you know, uh, I think you do know that you're live in Baltimore? Yes, and every time Don says 1067, this little dribble voice comes in and goes live 105. They've been doing that forever. Yeah. That's that's all right. Very Whatever. Clever. You know, this is so so messed up today. We're, we're just trying our best to do a regular show. <laughs> we have a pretty good show. Very loose show. Are you enjoying it, sir? Hello? Oh, I hung up on him. Good. Uh, Don and Mike, JFK. <laughs> Hello, I am loving our new monogamous relationship, Don and Mike. This is beautiful. I'm calling from Ashburn, and oh, monogamy is phenomenal. Yes, I guess he didn't listen to the previous two callers that would indicate that it is now a menage a trois. Yeah, but, oh. but really, mm -hmm. with no offense to Baltimore that's kind of pirating the signal, I guess, somehow, we're only servicing... One bitch. Yeah, they're just watching. We're just servicing the bitch known as WJFK. Yes, this is true. She's the one that's demanding our needs. The She's bitch. the one that's saying, play my commercial. She's the big bitch. She's the slut. She's not the little bitches. She's the big bitch. She's a big bitch. She's a big hairy bitch. WJFK. Have that voice guy say that. <laughs> She's one big hairy bitch. WJFK. JFK. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. JFK. Hey, I heard that guy from Ashburn. Yes. He didn't want to move. Pardon me, why should he move? No, he, after hearing him, I want to move. Hey, why, do you live in Ashburn? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, go ahead and move. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, bye. That's bye. funny. You know, I think he was speaking more to the guy. Yeah, Hello. no, I know. Don and Mike show, you're just partial to Ashburn, Mike. Well, no, I was just partial to that guy. <laughs> Hello, JFK. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I want to tell Don and Mike that JFK... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. Trying to understand you. Yes. Sweetheart. Turn the radio down. Oh, it's down. JFK. Now, wait a minute. Dead. Wait a minute. Now, what you said when you started, when we were talking to you, you were saying, I want to tell Don and Mike. Yes. You didn't know you were speaking to us. And I, saw, no, I, and I see here from the caller ID, you're calling from 703, mm -hmm. so you're hearing us live on JFK. Yes. So and let's, I wanna... let's get right to the point. I was going to say that JFK... Right. I hung up on him. <laughs> I just didn't want to... Whatever he was going to say... And he just wanted to say it bad. Yeah. Not he... relevant. Right. Hello, Don and Mike show. JFK. Yeah. Hi, this is Ron from Fairfax, guys. How's it going? Uh, it's going great, Ron. Hey, uh, just want to uh, piece your butt a little bit. I've been listening to you since the morning. Zoo Tommy, baby. And over the summer, you did that uh, Craig Wilson bit from USA Today about the baseball all-star game. Yeah. Followed by a Jew to Jew. I have to tell you guys, probably your best hour of radio. 
Thank you. It's very nice of you. Hey, like... hey Mike, uh, can I do an imitation for a Red Sox fan? Yes. Do you remember Sherm, the PA announcer at Fenway Park? <laughs> yes, I do. Sherm Feller, a famous, famous PI, PA guy. I, I can't imagine with the way your voice sounds that you'd be able to do that. So, so give it a Can try. I try it? Yeah, go ahead. Now batting for Boston. I knew you couldn't do it. Number eight, Dostremski. Carl Dostremski. Hi, guys. Hey! <laughs> Excuse me. Queer. <laughs> okay, guys. Yaz the queer. And, 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 uh, goodbye. You, you know, goodbye. you've never been up there, but that's that's the guy that had the really... Nobody. What are these guys? Okay, greatest P, I think the greatest PA voice in, in America. Hey. We have ringside... <laughs> oh, no, Rob Spiewak <laughs> is number one. Where's your, where's your Big Daddy tape? Which one? Oh, Big Daddy tape? The Big Daddy, like, like there is one that's <laughs> that's not head and shoulders above yeah. the rest? I'm sorry, I should. I misspoke. Right. This is the best PA there's, voice in America. There's one that's not a demo tape waiting to happen? At defensive tackle! <laughs> oh, what a hoot, and so totally refreshing. Okay. But Sherm should keep trying. I know he should. I think he might be dead, Rob. At 4, uh, excuse me, 543 on 106.7. Now, <laughs> you guys, here's what we have. Uh -oh. Ringside tickets. Oh, dear. And a meet and greet. Oh, my. With your favorite WWE wrestler. At Monday Night Raw, MCI Center, Monday night, September 22. Catch all the action, all the excitement of WWE. Don't miss 25 of your favorite WWE superstars. Call now. Only call from D.C., I guess, in Baltimore. If we're on. We don't really know if we're on. Mm -hmm. Only call if you can hear the show. 877-365-3636. As we attempt to play on a most... You know, I am pressing the button. Look at this. You know what? The cart's locked up. I'm pressing the button. The cart is locked up. Something. <laughs> You're in that pre like that, that something might get broken mode there. Or... I'm trying to keep it on yeah. on edge, Mike. I mean, I'm, tr I'm trying not to keep it. What are you doing there, Robbie? I'm, I'm, I'm trying the to cart. keep it balanced. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a jagged edge. We've had a lot of technical issues today. Now, hold on. It sounded like he was queuing up. Hey, guys, need it. Where, where did he go with it? It's still locked up. Oh, uh, you can't get any filler music that will that will help. Oh, that's the Joe music. That's the Joe music. Right, this oh. is pretty good. All right, we'll <laughs> use this as a. a nothing beats. I just want to say, we're gonna play make us laugh. <laughs> See, this is just not as good as. Thanks. Okay, well, here we go. We're gonna play. Make us laugh. <laughs> you love a good circus bed. <laughs> You don't get a lot of chance to play circus no. beds on the radio these days. And it's fitting for this particular bit of comedy. Oh, yeah. All right, so this has been a very unorganized, very loose show today. We'll continue that. Uh, Robbie, when we come back, we'll put 10 minutes on the clock. Call us at 877-365-3636. Only call if you can hear the show. Something tells me when we start taking these on screen, things are going to have to hang up, unfortunately, on people who can't hear the show today. Make us laugh. Me and Mike. All right. Make us laugh and win wrestling tickets, ringside tickets, and a meet and greet with your favorite WWE wrestler. Monday Raw, Monday Night Raw, MCI Center, Monday September. No disclaimers this time. Twenty-two. No need. No need. <laughs> Can I yell at bigots today? See what you're doing is highlighting. <laughs> right now you're highlighting, and that's why I purposely didn't mention. And because I keep meticulous records, it was five weeks ago ah, okay. that we did make Rob laugh where you got terribly upset. But yes, I know. Because the callers were out of control with Rob Ed. Yes, they, they, were, they were totally out of control. But you have to make both of us laugh. Phone number 877-365-3636. And you get the ringside tickets and a meet and greet with your favorite wrestler for Monday Night Raw. So call now. And I should mention also that, um, well, you know what? what? We'll break and I'll come back here at some point during the commercials. How you doing there, pal? Hello, pal. <laughs> hey, there goes. You see sad sack walking down, <laughs> down the hall? He should be loving it. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this one, is a show for his radio station. I'll tell you one thing, Alan. When you walk by the window with your head like that, you're going to spot every penny on the carpet. <laughs> guy just walks by the window with his head down like, oh, the worst day of his life. <laughs> worst day of his life. How you doing, pal? Hi, pal. Hey, come on in, pal. There he goes. Come here. Hi, Alan. Come here. Come here. Oh, dear. Oh, and he, that was a real... There was a, he's really looking forward to popping in here now. There he is. We'll ask him how he feels having a market exclusive show today. How do you feel with your exclusive program today? Here you go, market exclusive, 1067. That's it. And whatever whatever side deal you worked out with Baltimore. 
<laughs> well, yeah, isn't that good? You're happy about that, right? Oh, absolutely. Mi- we're thrilled. Network. We're, we're thrilled. Thrilled. Yeah. thrilled. So, uh, Alan, here you are, market exclusive today. How you feel? What do you want to say? Because you're being heard just in Washington. Maybe in Baltimore, but just in Washington. Hey, hon. <laughs> that was, was a Baltimore yeah, thing. That was for his wife, uh, I That believe. was my wife. And oh, kids. for your Honda. Oh, yeah. Your wife, I got it. Uh, hey, how about this nutty thing today with us? Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be on the best. Yeah. We, we're told we're on best of. Unbelievable. We get on the network, they turn it on. Do we go to commercials, they turn it off. It's a have, crazy day, isn't it, Al? Have you had any high-level discussions, Al, that you want to talk about? Not that I'd like to talk about now, but... Uh. Uh, I continue to be hopeful, that's all. Very good. good at that. All right. all right. Well, thank you, Alan. Uh, right. We're going to go to commercials now. Would you like to take us there? Go uh, you you're listening to 106.7 WJFK. <laughs> Finally, I need more than that. <laughs> no. All right, and now we'll be, back. we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to hear some commercials here on 106.7 WJFK. <laughs> not not, uh, not good enough. All right, I'll leave, I'll leave the fun to you guys. I'm out of here. <laughs> go ahead, punch it. Let's go, Rob. Commercial break. Buzz, help me out here. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I know you guys won't do this, so have a good day. <laughs> he just left. All right, there you go. He finally left. That's what you, you should have done two days ago, oh, Alan. Oh, my God. You dumbass. Oh, my God. I mean, really. Just here. I mean, we didn't even have to leave the room. I just turned everybody's microphones off. Huh? Sat down. <laughs> that was kind of a flashback for him, wasn't it? It sure was. Right. You see the horror in his eyes? 549 WJFK FM. Okay. Uh, we'll do comprehensive traffic here. Eat me, T.O.P. Look at this traffic on the AIDS coming up. <laughs> 5.57. Cloudy tonight, low 62. Buzz says rain tomorrow, high 78. You still saying it's a nice weekend? No. No. Oh. 76 right now. Accident cleanup continues on Georgetown Pike at Old Dominion. They were alternating traffic past the scene, slowing things westbound from the Beltway. Pick the toll road, Route 70. Be better doing better off, I think. Inner loop, outer loop, still some slow traffic off and on between 270 and Tyson's Corner. Outer loop and inner loop, slow exits 95 south. But the tractor trailer that broke down in Springfield has been cleared. All lanes are open. 395 is going to be heavy getting down to 95. It's also slow getting to Landmark and to Sherlington. 395 north, slow from Boundary Channel Drive across the 14th Street. Bridge. Northbound 16th Street. Hang up north of Walter Reed as the cement mixer stopped in the right lane. Broken down. Outbound Canal Road after Fletcher's Boathouse. It's the accident along the right side of the roadway. Traffic's brought to you by Tyson's Galleria. The Cheesecake Factory is now open at Tyson's Galleria. The Cheesecake Factory features over 200 menu choices and 50 delicious desserts. Seven days a week at exit 46A off I-495. Here abruptly at the Don and Mike Show. WJFK. Oh, dear girl. Are you all right? WJFK. <laughs> What's really funny is that the f***ing <laughs> jab away in sea caucus, I'm in the middle of the f***ing weeds, laying down. He comes over, he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm resting. I hear you resting. <laughs> I'm a f***ing beach in a park. I said, I'm resting. I know I'm resting, I'm resting. <laughs> they pull me in, they start giving me all kinds of questions, you know, this and that. He says, oh, uh, so what are you going to tell us, tough guy? I said, my usual, zero, nothing. I tell you, the f***ing. <laughs> he said, no, you're going to tell me something today, tough guy. I said, all right, I'll tell you something. Go f*** your mother. <laughs> Bing, pow, boom, bing. This is not a paper, Anthony. My head was up like this. Right? And then, now I'm coming around, you know. I start to come out of it. Who do I see in front of me? This big f*** again. He says, oh, what do you want to tell me now, tough guy? I said, bing, what are you doing here? I thought I'd tell you to go f*** your mother. <laughs> I thought he was going to sh- <laughs> oh, Pete! Oh, 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 oh. I wish I was big just one. <laughs> You're a big cop. You're really funny. You're really funny. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean I'm funny? <laughs> you know, it's a good story. It's funny. You're a funny guy. <laughs> you mean the way I talk? <laughs> Just, you know, you, it's, she's just funny. It's, it's funny, you know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how? I mean, what's funny about that? You tell me, no, you got it all wrong. Okay? Oh, oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? You're right. Funny how? What? Just, you know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> you mean, so? let me understand this, because I don't you know, maybe it's me, I'm a little f***ed up, maybe. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to f- amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? I'm not just... 
You know how you tell the story. What? No, no, I don't know. You said it. How do I know? You said I'm funny. How the f*** am I funny? What the f*** is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. Get some f*** out of here to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had him. I almost had him. <laughs> yeah, stutter him. <laughs> Frankie, was he shaking? <laughs> You may fold under questioning. Listen up, you BM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK, you can call John and Mike toll-free at 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Yeah! How charmingly ghetto. They're more soothing than a pair of buttery soft moccasins. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Here we are on 106.7 WJFK. Uh, today and, and tomorrow and, and then the weekend and we won't do the show for two days and then we'll come back on Monday. And, and I believe that before you play that little piece of tape there, uh, Buzz had made some comment concerning his weather forecast not necessarily uh, staying the same. Buzz yeah. had said uh, cloudy tonight. Mm -hmm. Rain tomorrow, but uh, they wrote in parentheses, but a nice weekend. Yeah, and we've been saying that all day. Did say that earlier, and that 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 was the forecast at that time. Well, no, I thought you were assuming responsibility, though. Yeah, you didn't take responsibility. You said you made that up. I'll take it's, responsibility. It's said in parentheses, but a nice weekend, like an aside from you. I, I reserve the right to change the stuff I make up. <laughs> so the forecast has changed. Yeah. Badly, you're not gonna like it. Mm -hmm. Rain Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You know that's amazing how fast it can change. Because if you yeah. watch, if you watch uh, Sam Palka, uh -huh. like I do on Channel Five, and he's just great. Uh, you know what he needs? Though he needs a cod piece. He, re he really does because, frankly, there's there, there's there's too much penis there. <laughs> oh, you you may like him, but I really do like Howard Hillary. <laughs> Howard Hillary, I, I saw the other night. And, yeah. uh, he's good too. Very excellent man. Anyway, I think it was just last night I was watching Fox Five, and uh, Sam Palka came on, and the seven day forecast was nothing but sunshine. Yeah. Sam Sam was saying over and over again, "Do you believe this great stretch of weather will happen?" Yeah. And I thought it was supposed to rain on Friday and then like clear up Saturday morning. That that's what they were saying. Yeah. So oh, now that's yeah. Like a the, what a wall of water coming our way? Pretty, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Mike, are... well, you know what? I'm encouraged by the fact that uh, they don't know whether that's true either, exactly. so it could change by Saturday. Exactly. Take all that negative stuff about the weather out of your head. I will, <laughs> because it's time to play. Make us laugh. Very good. Now we're not playing with Rob. We're not playing with Buzz. We're not playing with Charles, Joe, anybody else. Just me and Mike, and you got to make both of us laugh. If you make us laugh. You win ringside tickets and meet your favorite WWE wrestler. Monday Night Raw, MCI Center, Monday, September 22. Let's go right to these calls. And, Rob, we need ten minutes. Look on the big board. On the big board. Ten and minutes on the big board. Ten minutes. Go. Hello, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. Uh, yeah, why did Raggedy Ann get uh, kicked out of the toy box? Why? She uh, kept sitting on Pinocchio's face saying, lie to me, baby, lie to me. Right. Hello, Don and Mike. That is older than G. Gordon Liddy. Really? Hello, boys. This is Will Thomas. I think I think I think Jigor Liddy knew Pinocchio, <laughs> knew jo knew Geppetto. Who did you say you were, sir? Uh, this is Will Thomas. Hey, Wilma. How are you? Did that make you laugh? Almost. Not Maybe yet. Smile. Just the idea of Will Thomas because of the previous discussion. Is that all you have? No, but what do you call a gay program director? What? A homo sapien. Mm. Hello, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. Why were shopping carts invented? Why? To teach garbage cans how to walk on their hind legs. The only thing that made me laugh was when we, I was thinking about that porno guy we Thank had. God, on. that garbage can. That garbage <laughs> cans. He was talking about the girls in his movies. Hello, Don and Mike. Show. Oh, hold on. Hold on to that. Let me just tell you. The highlight uh, tomorrow. Stop the clock. Tomorrow's show, besides, uh, boy, it's going to be a sex fest. The sexiest woman on television. Jim Nance will be on again to pick the pros until they scab and bleed. Right, you got me all excited for nothing there. Also tomorrow uh, from HBO, Real Sex presents Porn 101, mm -hmm. Triple Extra Credit. This is, this is some new uh, HBO porno thing. Right. And th th we're going to have the tape here to watch. Oh, good. And the lady on the telephone for us to comment on, on what this, okay. the HBO special starts the 13th. Charlie Broyhill. It's amateur porno. 
Even better. Ah, mm. amateur porn. Even better. So we'll have a little viewing party, and we'll have the producer on the telephone to tell her what we like and what we don't like. Yeah, very exciting. And it's not a producer. It's one of the amateurs. Oh. <laughs> Even, God, it gets better by the minute. That's fantastic. One of the participants. One of the, Male or female? One of the F-balls. Here he comes again. It's a she-male. No, I'm kidding. Ah! <laughs> it's a female. Female. Okay. Ah, very good, very good. And look at that. Rob, stop the clock. Yeah, there's a, a minute five on the big board. Okay, let's keep it going. Very good. Sorry about that. Program reminder time. Now back to Make Us Laugh on WJFK. 606. Hello? Hey, Donna Mike. Hey, Make Us Laugh. Okay, there was a salesman going down the road, and she saw a sign for apples and said $5 a piece. So he stopped, and the guy said, yeah, they're $5 a piece. He said, but they taste like peanut butter and jelly. So the guy bit the one side, it tastes like peanut butter. And he said, man, this only tastes like peanut butter. He said, turn it over. He bit the other side, it tastes like jelly. He got bought a dozen of them. Went down the road a little further, he said, apples, $25 a piece. He stopped. He said they yeah, taste yeah. like candy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Time. You know what you need to do? You need to shut up and go make dinner for your husband. <laughs> God. Does that count? You get the uh, ringside seats. I laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ron and Mike. JFK, make us laugh. Hello. Hello. Not there. <laughs> WJFK, make us laugh. Hello. Hello. Yeah. WJFK, make us laugh, please. Okay, this penguin's driving with his car on a hot summer day. His car breaks down. He goes to the mechanic shop. Mechanic says, come back in an hour. Penguin goes running outside, sees an ice cream shop, wants to cool down, goes to an ice cream shop, eats an ice cream cone, gets it all over him because of the flipper problem, right? I know this. You know, what I find annoying is when someone... You know, reading, didn't you tell me this joke, Rob? Yeah, reading a, reading a joke. joke. Yeah, yeah. And Rob, the punchline is? It looks like you blew a seal. No, it's only ice cream. Yeah, that's gotcha. It. Uh, hi, Don and Mike Show. Make us laugh, please. The city friends on the Bay on Bay. Ye suckers. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Make us laugh. Pronto. Hello. Hello. Pronto. Did he say Toronto? No. Pronto. Is this, is this the how do you say uh, little bambino escort service? I don't know. He is, is he doing some uh, he, Spanish? He's oh. doing like an Italian thing. This oh, Italian. Italy. Pronto. 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 Goodbye. Hello, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. Hi, it's sir. Nope. Hi, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. I mean, real life, if that was really surf, we'd laugh. Hello, hey, Don and Mike. Hi, make us laugh. What does a beach blonde and an airplane have in common? What? They both have a black box. Oh, oh come that, on. That, that was have... funny. I smiled. Come what, on. What does a beach blonde? Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, if Don's sex life was a movie, what would it be called? If, if what? Come, come again? If Don Geronimo's sex life were a movie, what would it uh, be called? What would it be? Don in 60 Seconds. And I hate marbles in the mouth. In the Hello, John and Mike show. Make us laugh, please. <laughs> Hello? Hey, JC, where did she get the haircut? Uh, what? Can, well, can I ask people to maybe make themselves please. clearer? Hello, Don and Mike. I'm deaf. Make us laugh. Hello? Hello? You're on the air. Make us laugh. Hello? Hi, Don and Mike. WJFK. Make us laugh. What does a West Virginia girl and a baby bear have in common? What? They both lick their paw. Come on. I got another one. What's well, the difference? Come on, one more. I'll, I'll say. All right, one more, one more. What's the difference between a blonde and a mosquito? What? A mosquito stops sucking when you smack it on the head. <laughs> See, now, te now, technically, <laughs> if you got one more, you can win because the first one did make me laugh. Right. The second one did make Mike laugh. Mm -hmm. Do you have a third? What does an 80-year-old woman's coochie smell like? What? Depends. Yeah, that's no. another. Oh, oh, the third one. Oh, Unfortunate. You made me laugh with the lick, lick the paws. Yeah. E e and I was almost there with that one, mm -hmm. but just not. I don't know. And the one that made you laugh didn't get me, and that was the the Hit mosquito the one. On the head. <laughs> the what? Hit the blonde on the head. Yeah. Oh right. <laughs> Hello, Tom and Mike show. Make us laugh. Hello. Oh. Having a little trouble with uh, people hearing us. Tonight. Hi, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. Halfway! <laughs> Don and Mike, there's lots and lots of blood in my stool. Okay, maybe a couple of days ago that yeah. would have worked, darling. Hello, Don and Mike show. Make us laugh. I hate these jokes! These people are the stink! That's a statement, not trying to make us laugh. Hi, Don and Mike show. Make us laugh. That's somebody who just didn't think they had it. Mm. Hello, you're on the air. WJFK, make us laugh. 
Son of Mike? Yes. Uh, how do you know a boy becomes a man in Iraq? How, how, how do, do you know, know a boy becomes, becomes a man in Iraq? They take the diaper off his ass and wrap it around his head. Hi, Don and Mike show. Make his laugh. Don and Mike I got the part on. Uh -huh. Hello, make his laugh. Hello? You're on the air. Uh, hello there, the Dons and Max. <laughs> Listen, this will only work with me, not with Mike. I I'm looking for Jack Bowers. Hello, Don and Mike show. Jack who? Jack ba Jack Bowers. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Okay, yes. This is the president from 24s. Yeah, I don't want to betray myself, but that way, if he kept going, I probably would be right behind you. Hello. Hello there. Keepers. Jack Bowers. Keepers Sutherland's. Jack Bowers. This and the presidents. Hello, Don and Mike, make us laugh. Do Mal May? You're out of here! I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. I mean, people are really not working on that today. No. Hello, Don and Mike show. Make us hey, laugh. Hi, why don't you see too many blind skydivers? Why? Because it scares the hell out of the dogs. Mm. I thought he said blind, blonde, not blonde. Blind. Blind, oh, I get it. I get yeah. jokes. Hi, Don and Mike, make us laugh. Don and Mike, bother. Yeah. Okay. Mike Tyson and Don King are at the Vatican. And Mike Tyson's eating peanut shells, walking around looking at the paint, saying, "Oh man, you be beautiful, you be great." Let me just say, there, you better just go right to the to the punchline here. I, I got a bad feeling about Don King, not not about the content, but about the length of this joke. What's the punchline? Well, pu punchline is the Pope looks like he blesses Mike Tyson. The priest sees it and says, "How can you bless an awful man like Mike Tyson?" And he goes, "I didn't bless him. I pointed at him doing the prayer thing. He said, you stupid piece of ass, pick up the peanut shells.'" Get the other piece of ass and get the FS. Good call, Don. Look how much time yeah. I saved you. Very good. good. You, the consumer. Don and Mike show. Make us laugh. Yeah. How many Filipinos does it take to turn on a light bulb? How many? One flip. One Okay. Hello, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. <laughs> Is this really Dennis? No. <laughs> I think everybody's calling from pay phones. Today. Hi, Don and Mike. Make us laugh. Don, Mike... I'm scared. Help. All right, I'll uh, bite. Why are you scared? Well, I don't know. I don't have anything funny to say. Oh, God. Thanks, thanks for calling me. Don and Mike make us laugh. Hello? Hello? Yes, you're on the air, for the love of God. <laughs> uh, what's got two legs and bleeds profusely? What? Half a cat. <laughs> we, ladies and gentlemen, just as we hit the two-minute timer, we do have a legitimate winner. Yeah. Yes. Never heard of it before. Me either. <laughs> and he gets Love to go it. in one direction, and he comes right. My favorite guy. That's the winner. That is a good joke. What's your name? My name is Craig. Craig, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Stafford. All right, uh, Craig, enjoy your ringside tickets and a meet and greet with your favorite WWE wrestler. Monday Night Raw, MCI Center, Monday, September 22. <laughs> Don't miss 25 of your favorite WWE superstars. Have a great time. <laughs> it's, All right. You know, you know, and and want to give it to us one more time, yeah, okay? Come on. Uh, what has two legs and bleeds profusely? What? Half a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Buzz, you're shaking your head. I know. I, it's funny. I just, you it know, I it's know a cat it's a cat and, thing. I yeah, know. But I know. it is funny. And, of course, I, you know how I feel about cats, so I yeah. just, uh, it, it was extra it was funny to you. And, yeah. and yeah. I liked it. Yeah. And you, like, you liked it, too, and then the boy liked it also. It was like a frog in a blender. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> the green goes 90 miles an hour. Same thing. Frog in yeah. a blender. Yeah, sure. uh -huh. Animal it, cruelty. Uh -huh. Always funny. And didn't you think at the very beginning he was... He was going to be taking a trip down menstruation lane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Wait till we get him. Still alive. Ah, oh, here. See, now we're cutting. Oh, now we're getting right into... And there you go. And, and, he's, and he's done. Wow. A uh, buzz. Yes. You know, it's been a while. Yeah, that was that was pretty solid. Buzz on JFK. I mean, no offense to the other cities. Did you like last Tuesday? I'm much Looser. calmer now. Yeah, I know. I mean, once we got past that first C off of the first break, right? I like doing this. I like not worrying about the commercials, saying the time when you feel like it. Less pressure because we're among friends. Great to break into the middle of commercials. Yeah. And here we go at 6.15.
WJFK. In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, Airboza. one man found a way to bring good news to his people. Here he is, Buzz. It's me. He made it up. All right, Buzz, what's your lead story today? Today, like Elvis, another singer from the 60s keeps on giving, Sammy was a swinger. Ooh. Sammy. Hey, good chance for you to do your Alta Vista thing. May I have a glass of water, please? <laughs> what was your wife's name? Alta Vista. <laughs> Stay tuned Stay tuned, for everybody. news and comments, news and comments coming, up coming up on the Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike Show. 616 on 106.7. That was all very... Professional. It's the... Uh... Mike. Yeah, Dodd. It is really great doing these singular commercials. Dodd. Bike. My favorite parts when you tell people to call one eight six six singular. Dot B bike. My favorite part is when you talk about great comedy plans like family block. You're right, dog. <laughs> family talk allows you to add a lie to your existing calling plan for just die, 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 die per line per bud. But bike. You're forgetting singular offers. Bowl over, which allows you to bowl over your unused minutes to the next month for up to a year. <laughs> Switch to Singular right now and get a $25 Singular gift card, good toward phones, accessories, and even airtime. I use Singular to call Spectron 7. Right now, Singular is making it simple to get a great phone deal, too. Through the entire month of September, every phone is free. Sign up for two years of service. Get a TMDA. Hey, DA, our multi-network phone free. Keep connected, keep it simple. Just switch to Singular Wireless. Call Singular at one eight six six singular Log on to Singular.com or visit any Singular Wireless store in your area. Tell them Dodd and Mike sent you. You know, see, this should prove them. Today we did this without the clock. We, you know, it, it's, it's over a minute 20 worth of copy. It's not even done. Good job, Don. Great job, Mike. Serve restrictions apply. Any Singular Wireless store oh, for right. details. Okay, okay. Six. 24 WJFK. Here's traffic. Lined up on the outer loop of the Beltway from River Road toward the Toll Road. Still very slow on the Georgetown Pike westbound from the Beltway out to the Madeira School. The accident itself at Old Dominion has moved on to Old Dominion north of the Georgetown Pike. Heavier volume on the Toll Road west with seven signal light delays, but still maybe a better option than the Pike. 66 heavy getting through Vienna and making your way west into Manassas. Outer loop route one to the Wilson. Still but a slow exit off the Beltway to head south on 95, but the broken down truck at 644 is gone. 295 north looks pretty Pretty good getting to the 14th Street Bridge. Inner loop delays off the Legion Bridge to 270. Then from Old Georgetown Road east to the accident at University Boulevard. Now pulled to the right shoulder. Northbound 355 at north intersection with Tuckerman Lane. It's the right side tied up with the wreck. Slow from the Beltway. Traffic is brought to you by the U.S. Army Spirit of America. Take Metro to the U.S. Army Spirit of America show. Coming to MCI Center September 18th through the 21st. For free tickets, visit MCI Center box office. Here at Buckley, Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike Show, WJFK. Hey, you WJFK. What's the word you play at Crack Bar? WJFK. Right, right. The Don and Mike Show. Ba 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 ba, darling. The Don and Mike Show. Hi, baby. Right, it's time for uh, news and comments with uh, Buzz Birdcage. Buzz, brought to you by Veramax Sexual Pleasure Performance Enhancer. Someone called for a doctor. It's doctor developed, clinically tested. Veramax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, other select retailers. Try it today. Veramax one triple eight. Try VMAX now. Six twenty six. On 106.7. Here's Buzz. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. ran with Frank Sinatra's Rat Pack in the 1960s, but his sex life was way ahead of his time. Mr. Bo Django. By one account, he had sex like a crazed weasel. Oh. Longtime friend and business partner Arthur Silber says Sammy had a lot of threesomes with women and men. Silber hey, says. Hey, queer. <laughs> Silber says he was part of those trios more than once. He says they often shared the same call girl, which wasn't necessarily a good thing for Silber. He says one woman liked Sammy so much she had sex with him in every room of his suite while Silber just watched. <laughs> Another time, Sammy reportedly looked up from the pile of flesh and said, My mom would be disappointed in me for doing this. She thinks I'm in Chicago selling dope. <laughs> All that and more in Silber's new book, Sammy Davis Jr., Me and My Shadow. It was a queer, right? And that's the, the new official word Maybe now. Bi in this because case, it's queer, you know, queer eye for the queer is okay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> All right, everybody, <laughs> come on now. We're gonna have a big pile of flesh and Sammy's queer. Think about this: this big queer. Gather around the candy man. Come on, boys and girls. Sweet chocolate. 
Makes you wonder now about the treats he might be offering the boys and girls, huh? Comes the right man Actually makes it a much more interesting song, everybody. Who can make a song? <laughs> <laughs> With you. There's something in my M&M. No, no, no. Don't worry, it's the candy man out of these. The candy man. <laughs> Help me. Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong fame is going to prison. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He was arrested. Really? How did they finally catch him? He was arrested in February after an FBI raid. In May, he pleaded guilty to charges of conspiracy to sell drug paraphernalia. I am shocked. He sold bonds on his website. Shocked, Buzz. Let me just say, is Dave there? <laughs> Dave's not here, man. Hey, Dave. Dave! <laughs> I forgot that bit. <laughs> He's apologized and said he... Hey. hey! What are you trying to do? You ruined my record, man. Ruined my record, man! I just bought it! Tommy's apologized and said he never meant to break the law, but he also said he'd play out this case in an upcoming reunion movie with Cheech. Well, the judge didn't like that. He said Chong was showing disrespect for the law. So today the judge sent Tommy to prison for nine months and fined him a quarter of a million dollars. You know, that is something that in today's... For selling bongs? For selling bongs. In today's world, I, I don't think you can relate to... Uh, even as funny as Chris Rock is mm -hmm. and, and some of the other guys, there's nothing like... When, when I was in high school, oh, yeah. when you go to the record store and you buy up and smoke and you go home... And you would listen to those bits, and if you were high or not, no, didn't matter. You'd laugh every time. Hey, Dave, <laughs> Dave's not here. So funny. <laughs> I mean, Sister Mary Elephant, yeah. class, basketball Jones. Yeah. Unbelievable. And people forget how much they did, how oh, much original stuff they did. A lot. Yeah, they were funny. Me like Cheech and Chong, mm -hmm. and he's going to. Going to jail for selling bonds. Prison hard time for nine months and a quarter of a million dollar fine for selling pieces of plastic. Now that's not the guy. Not that's... even selling drugs. Right. That's Just... not the. That's not the guy that's on Nash Bridges. Bridges. Right? No, that was Chief that's Marin. Chief Marin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. At, well, for ten years, Michael Jackson's been getting big tax breaks on his Neverland Ranch. Hey, he's a queer. <laughs> Agricultural tax breaks that cut seventy grand a year off his tax bill. Agricultural tax breaks. Now he really does lease part of his twenty six hundred acres to cattle ranchers, so he deserves part of that tax break. But officials in Santa Barbara County say Michael's also been getting that same agricultural tax break on his home, including its three car garage and gatehouse, along with his amusement park, his <laughs> zoo, his drive in theater, Hi. his go kart track, and his monkey house. Thank you and, very much for the ooh. tax break. For him, the, t the petting zoo is really a petting zoo. <laughs> a heavy petting zoo. Michael's now agreed to stop claiming those things and just to claim the land that he leases to real ranchers. But officials say they may still go to court to get back uh, the back taxes and to levy some fines for various building permit and zoning violations. Please don't don't tax my zoo. Hey, give, give me one second here, Buzz. I'm looking for All a right. radio story. Okay. That I, I don't remember which side I saw it on. It was a headline. Rick D's, uh, it's gone. You know the guy in Los Angeles? What did he do now? We move on. Major exclusive Rick D's remote. The first DJ to broadcast live from Neverland Ranch. Absolutely. If you could, would you? <laughs> oh, and you know, that'll be controversial. Yeah. We're out here. They've got the giraffes. It's fantastic. It's like a playground. Michael, thanks so much for having us. That's what that's going to be. Of course okay. it'll be. Okay. Can you hear the Ferris wheel? It's there. Uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Do I smell semen? <laughs> if ooh. you could be touched in the heavy petting zoo, would, would you? you? <laughs> well, anyway, of, of all the radios, yeah. and I'm sure it's because that station in Los Angeles just pays out the dough. Right. I, I mean, they said to Mike, I'm sure they said to Michael Jackson, we'll give you a million dollars. And we won't say anything bad. You let our goofy morning guy come in in his big, loud plaid shirt, let him drive his, <laughs> his, his, his big hoopty mobile in, <laughs> and we promise he won't ask you anything about touching kids. Won't be or... any controversy at all. You better know that there are contracts out the wazoo for that. Or how no, but nobody buys your records anymore. You're just going to get, you're going to get your white ass kissed, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Is this the same merry-go-round that Gregory Peck was on? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, all these back Taxes will cost Jacko a lot of money at a time he supposedly doesn't have it. In fact, there's been speculation that the fundraiser this weekend at his ranch is really for two charities, Racial Unity Through Music and Michael. Uh, that seems kind of credible since people who were going to Ben and Jen's wedding this weekend, not far from the ranch, got a hard sell phone call about Michael's fundraiser. 
One guest says it was, quote, a very hard sales pitch. The caller said the party would be just 20 minutes from the wedding and that it was highly likely Ben and Jen would stop by along with other big names. Well, the wedding is off now, but the fundraiser is still on with fewer guests than expected. Hey, and listen, I'm, I'm willing to give up this benefit thing, but I love calling them BJ. Yeah. <laughs> now, now that I really... BJ, now is that yours? I've not heard it anywhere else, but I didn't hear benefit anywhere else either. BJ. Uh, BJ. Yeah. I love this BJ story so much because there, there's one of uh, a couple of things that happened. Either she wised up mm -hmm. and she woke up one morning and looked at this in incredible dolt who won the lottery, <laughs> the, the Oscar movie making lottery. Right. You know, watched him you know, looking at the boogers up his nose as he breathes through his mouth and just, I can't, I can't, this guy can't be my third husband. <laughs> or one of his friends called him, yeah. like Matt Damon called him and said, you know, Hey, dude, you're the luckiest guy on the face of the earth. Right. You've made some money in some films. Mm -hmm. You're going to marry this bitch, and she's going to take you, and it's <laughs> going to be over. Or the worst possible scenario yes. is that re they really are just uh, upset about all of the publicity, yeah. and they're really just going to get married anyway. Really? I hope that's not it. Well, after Michael Jackson left a hotel in Miami recently, he left behind more than just some dirty diapers and a hamster. Uh-oh. Jacko and his crew uh, stayed in the six-room presidential suite at Miami's swanky Mandarin Oriental Hotel. And although he did pay $5,000 a night for the stay, the hotel staff says that gave him no right to trash the place. Besides the diapers and the hamster, they found a pet rat and a lot of junk food. Here they are at the Mandarin Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, a black man. I don't think so. Not with Michael Jackson. The walls and the paintings on the walls had been vandalized with a black magic marker. Jackson's publicist says that doesn't sound like Michael, but quoting a witness, I know what I saw, and it wasn't pretty. All right, here we go on BJ. Very good. And the information here. There are three separate, very possible rumors. Mm -hmm. There's, they'll still get married on Sunday in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing with them canceling it is a ploy to throw off the media. Right. They'll elope this weekend. Or they have actually split up already and will not be married. Wow. According to somebody, USA Today, mm -hmm. those are the only three possibilities. The only three possibilities. Look for the first one. People Magazine says they were scared. You think they're going to get married anyway? Yeah, I think so. They didn't have any idea how much attention they were going to generate. Uh, that's uh, That's BS. Yeah, I, don't. I think that's BS. I think they knew exactly how much attention they were going to get. I'm going to go with my number one, mm -hmm. which is that she woke up mm -hmm. and looked over at him and just saw the big, you know, like like bald cheese. And, and just said, get out. Boogers. And <laughs> get just, out. You know, bad bad Ben Affleck breath blowing <laughs> on her. And just thinking, of, my God, her ass is a bigger star than his face will ever be. <laughs> no, get, move. Go. Get out there, devil. Go. Go! Well, here it is, two years after the 9-11 attacks, and Osama bin Laden's still walking around out there somewhere. Bush can't find him, but TV cameras can, and OBL was back on the tube yesterday swearing he'd kill more of us. I won't bother to repeat any of his insane rhetoric. You know the drill by now. Nevertheless, the nervous purposes on Wall Street shuddered in fear, and NASDAQ made its biggest nosedive in months oh, yesterday. God. come on. Buzz, and Buzz is bringing me back to a point that I had yesterday, and I really mean this. Mm -hmm. When he when Osama goes on right. the Al Al Jazeera, right. and I, that's got to be my next radio name. This is Al Jazeera with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. When he goes on that network, mm -hmm. we should ignore it. Yeah, we because it's just rhetoric. It's yeah, just it is, and he's standard. done it before. It's not like he hasn't done it. You know, right? We know the drums. The guy, seriously, the I don't get how they can't find him though. I just don't get that. It's maddening, isn't it? The guy's got Jesus Christ. If he's really making those tapes. Mm -hmm. He's got the deal where, like, you send in 15 sec cents and you get a CD, right. and then they send you another CD, and if you don't like it after five CDs, you can cancel at any time. Mm -hmm. it, it's like he's putting out these tapes at the same rate of speed. Yeah. Seems like once a month, he's in some different exotic location, which always appears to be a bunker somewhere, mm -hmm. and he's wearing a different outfit, but he's saying the same crap, you know, a death to a medic. And yeah. rather than just ignore it... Mm -hmm. Or, or maybe not ignored, because that's that's burying our head in the sand, no pun intended. Right. We should just say, wouldn't you love just the, the, the guy on the TV to get up, you get one more and turn on the Today Show, and they say, another tape full of BS from Osama bin Laden. We're not going to show it to you. Mm -hmm. But there's another one out yeah, there. Yeah, he made yeah. another one we're not going to share. More of the same. plays into his propaganda. Right, right. You know the lead story should be on the Today Show? Right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt Lauer. I'm Kitty Couric.
Do you believe that dude from Cheech and Chong got <laughs> arrested for selling bongs? Where's the justice? It'd be my choice. Well, airlines canceled flights after this uh, because jittery air travel started changing their plans. Uh, the government says it has no plans to raise the terror alert level from yellow to orange. Saddam Hussein, by the way, is still out there, too, but that's another story for another day. All right, Buzz, we'll do this now. Keep in mind, everybody, these are not your normal, you know, long... Right. So we'll be back very Stick shortly. Yeah. 6.38, almost, WJFK. 6.43. I'm attacking a big white bitch. Southbound on 95. The outer loop is all the way to get there is still slow from Braddock Road. The inner loop is thinned out. 95, much better pace down to Newington. Just slow in the express lanes now. Georgetown Pike, the wreck at Old Dominion, is now moved on to Old Dominion north of the Georgetown Pike. Still slower than normal, leaving the beltway after the Madeira School. So the toll road or even where it's 7 still looks better. Eastbound 66, the wreck after Nutley Street. Moved on to the left shoulder. Brief abrupt slowdown there. Westbound still after Nutley. Out to 123. We cleared out of the Wilson Bridge some time ago. Inner loop delays off the Legion Bridge to 270. Leaving Bethesda into Silver Spring, but the wreck at University Boulevard is out of your way. Northwest Washington, still very slow out of Georgetown, heading out on Canal Road. After Fletcher's Boathouse, accident was along the right side. 16th Street, still really heavy out of Northwest, but north of Walter Reed, the broken down cement mixer is gone. Traffic's brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Outback's call ahead seating gets you seated quicker. Give a ring before you come, put your name in the waiting list. Get seated quicker at Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just hey. right. Here, roughly down to Mike Show, WJFK. No, no music. Damn, that's the angry bitch. Yeah. Yeah. WJFK. Oh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. WJFK. Right, that's our station. John and Mike show. Our station today. Not just lowbrow, they're no brow. Don and Mike. 6 7. 6 44. You know, I, I don't know what's going to happen with our network situation, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's it's a hell of a lot more comfortable just playing the commercials when we feel like it. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, if we we have to play six minutes here and then, then eight minutes there and, and, and two minutes here, and, and it's just it's a lot easier. It's relaxed. Really, really, really it is. It's really great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. I, I really don't know. Here's Buzz. Hi, Donna Mike. Uh, there's only one videotape that shows both planes smashing into the World Trade Center towers, and now ABC has that tape. The tape was shot by an immigrant construction worker who was making a sightseeing tape for a friend. The network thought it would be getting the tape for free. It ended up paying for the tape. ABC won't say how much it paid, but word is the price could have topped $100,000. There's only one other tape that shows the first plane hitting the first tower. The feds are interested in both tapes to try to determine the speed of that first plane. You know, maybe it's an adrenaline rush. Maybe when I get home tonight, I'll crash. Maybe. Because maybe that's why I'm so giddy that we came on the air, we thought we had one plan, then then they pulled the rug out from under us. Right. And we just had to react. We just had kind of like a goofy show where we've not had any limits on, on the time or, or what we do. The, it the was only, goofy. The only limit we've had is be done mm -hmm. in time for Ron and Fez at 705. That's, that's easy. easy. And those are parameters that we can live with. Amen, brother. So it's it's nutty. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll go home tonight, I don't know, and, and just totally crash, but no, I don't think so. feeling good now. Yeah, feel good, why not? It's all right. Is CSI on tonight? Two episodes. Two? Yeah. Two CSIs? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Duffman says, oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll be oh, fine, then. yeah. I'd like to remind everybody, although only one of you should take me up on this, my birthday's next Thursday. I've purposely not bought season two of CSI on DVD yet. Mine. See, see that right there? I worked the plug in for my birthday yeah. and the gift. That's good. Yeah. Did you call Shotgun on that? I did. I got I it. Did. Oh, you got it already. Good no. Boy. Any other ideas? Feel free to speak up. That's it. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. I'll get you. I'm going to get you sneakers and sunglasses. <laughs> Hey. That's from years ago, isn't it? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. We used to get each other sun sunglasses and sneakers. We did for a while. <laughs> those were the days. Pretty funny. Ozzy Osbourne. And overalls. <laughs> and wheat. <laughs> wheat to chew on. Ozzy Osbourne started drinking again recently, even while his own son was waiting for a bed at a rehab center. 
Hey, that makes the show funnier. Well, that was more than Sharon could bear, so she says she left him, left Ozzy, walked out on him. Ladies and gentlemen, you are hearing the desperate attempts yep. for yeah. a family to save a show that's about to go off the air. And, and to promote another, perhaps. And she's got her own daytime talk show coming out soon, too. Well, this was earlier in the summer that she left him. One night, she just left. She got up and left. The next day, she says Ozzy stopped drinking and hasn't drunk since. So Sharon says she moved yeah. back in with her husband four days later. Son Jack got into and out of rehab after he washed down some pills with absinthe, a hallucinogenic alcoholic <laughs> drink that's banned in this country. Oh, my God. Jack says he was depressed over his mom's colon cancer, which is now in remission. Ozzy was apparently depressed, too. Me mom's bum. <laughs> Sharon talks about all this tomorrow night on Barbara Walters 2020. Hey, how's ye bum? That stuff, we've discussed that stuff Absolutely. before. That's the Marilyn Manson drink, right? right. Isn't that's that so, featured yeah. prominently in the movie Moulin Rouge. Also. Yes, it is. And I know that uh, Marilyn Manson, I've, I've read uh, and, and seen him in interviews saying that he drinks it and paints. Yeah. That he drinks and then paints and, and doesn't, Artists have used it. doesn't necessarily paint abstract stuff. Uh, just it's, it, it's, what is it, Buzz? Is it like grain alcohol times a thousand? No, yeah, there's a hallucinogen. Uh, Rob might know more about this. It's uh, derived, it's distilled from wormwood. And I think the worm is what, uh, I'm not clear exactly from all the absinthe I've been drinking. <laughs> no, but I'm not clear exactly what, but it's, it has something to do with wormwood. And when we were in, in France, Mm -hmm. Your your neighbor kept trying to get me to drink it. Oh, that's right. They, they, Gary, is right. it legal in France? Oh, yeah. Some countries it is, yeah. No, it's... I remember Gary said it's like liquid heroin. Yeah. Now I remember, and that's like, why we wouldn't try it. The like... moment he said that, I was like, I'll have another beer, please. <laughs> Come on, mate, it's like liquid heroin. Wow. What? Like Liquid heroin. Like mushrooms and some other hallucinogens, it's basically poison that damages uh, brain cells, and that's how it works. It's wow. Like, that's that's what Ozzy was drinking. Always wanted to try it. But now he's okay. Jack. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jack was washing down pills with it. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't mix uh, absinthe with pills. No. Sharon's new daytime You would just drink show. it, what, straight? Yeah, I just... just would you uh, try it? I, I would. <laughs> I've always been curious about it. You know, the yeah. forbidden. Why not? Whoa, Nelly, the rapper by that name, is taking some heat from some fellow African-Americans over his marketing of a beverage called Pimp Juice. <laughs> it's it's a, bright, a bright green soft drink made of apple juice, herbs, and vitamins that's supposed to give you energy and keep you awake. <laughs> Yeah, you have some pimp juice. The uh, press release also says it mixes well with vodka. <laughs> this Hello, this am pimp. This is for pimp juice. <laughs> Danelli, <laughs> listen now to my white friend Rick Dees. Are there times when you have to have fresh breath? Uh, Nelly, how does the pimp juice do with the fresh breath? The pimp juice that make your breath smell like the air freshener in a car. <laughs> you know, the tree. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. <laughs> yeah. Hello there, I Buzz. Hi, 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 Nelly. Buzz, what in that drink you was drinking? Uh, that was uh, some pimp juice. <laughs> Ooh, with, with a little absinthe in it. That is what you were drinking, Buzz. Well, Nelly's uh, pimp juice infuriates the National Alliance for Positive Action, the National Black Anti-Defamation League, and the Messianic African Nation. Quoting them, Nelly's selling out because he only cares about money, just like pimps. We intend to chase pimp juice out of the black community. Any store that carries this product will be targeted for boycotts. <laughs> pimp juice. Pimp juice. Is, pimp juice equals funny. <laughs> they go on to say we should be building a nation of leaders, not a nation of super energized drunk pimps. More pimp juice, Mom. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but quoting Nelly, finish your absence, dear. Oh, Nelly. But quoting Nelly, <laughs> it's a word that's changed over the last ten years. Pimp juice is anything that attracts the opposite sex. It could be money, fame, or intellect. It don't matter. Matter, I'll be drinking quote. some pimp juice tonight. Pimp juice, <laughs> some PJ. <laughs> About the hottest thing of the summer of 03 was Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Last week, in fact, the, that show beat ne nearly everything on TV, including all but one of the big commercial broadcasts. This networks. is Larry Michael, Westwood One, Notre Dame Radio. <laughs> so these... you don't know, is he the Queer Eye or the Straight Guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's drinking pimp juice. You decide. <laughs> so these guys... He's drinking pimp juice right from the tap. <laughs> the Fab Five must be rich now, right? <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. And this doesn't come from them. The Smoking Gun website says the Fab Five have made only three thousand dollars an episode. That is paltry by today's TV standards. See, do, you, do you remember? This is like it buzzes mm -hmm. your mind when you were there too mm -hmm. in Sacramento yep, yep. Uh, seven or eight years ago when those idiots from Fox came in, mm -hmm. right? And they had this thing. They said, "Well, we got a great idea." I mean, I'm not kidding about this. Yeah. We want you guys, Don and Mike. To be on uh, during football season, mm -hmm. you know how sometimes the games go till seven thirty, then they do the wrap up, and they got ten or fifteen minutes right. before eight o'clock. He said, "You guys would be perfect 
put you on after the games, before the Simpsons, mm -hmm. and every week you'll have between 20 minutes and, and 5 minutes to fill. Right. And, and we said... Fox TV, fantastic. After, I mean, network television, very cool. After football, before the Simpsons, mm -hmm. live, us just talking about whatever we want, incredible. Mm -hmm. Where do we sign? And right. that then they sent a contract, and the money that we were offered was less than what the 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 Queer Eye guys are getting, and mm -hmm. they wanted us to be on the road for eight weeks. And I think that probably it's the, it's uh, to a lesser extent or or maybe to a greater extent the same with these guys. And they probably went to him and said, "Hey, hey, queers, hey, you five queers, how'd you like a TV show?" The attitude is basically, if you have a good job like we had at the time, uh, give up your good job, right? You know, and uh, roll the dice Just and, and, you're and see what happens. But right. you know, the only way you're going to make money in this racket is if the show becomes an overwhelming hit and then you extort the money out of us. Three grand an episode. Laura Flynn Boyle of The Practice, for example, makes about forty five thousand dollars per episode. Now, the Fab Five's contracts gives them raises of just 5% a year, so it's not like things are going to get a lot better for them. They get no perks. When they travel, they fly coach. They get a piece of the marketing, but a very small piece, according to their contract on the Smoking Gun website. WJFK weather turning cloudy tonight with a low around 62. Hey. Rain tonight with a high around you, 78. Buzz. Good for you. Right I now. like that WJFK weather. You mean rain tomorrow? What did I say? Rain tonight. Uh, I meant rain tomorrow. Rain. Cloudy tonight. WJFK weather. Yeah. Thank you, weather. And right now it's 75. Spy report. <laughs> 75 now. <laughs> Finally, a tourist who had a pot of 180-degree coffee spilled in his lap at Disney World. <laughs> Still the happiest place on earth. He's been awarded nearly seven hundred thousand dollars by a Florida jury. Smith. The pot. <laughs> Smith here, Mr. Eisner. I am. Um, I just got the the results of the jury trial. I'm going to be taking a long vacation, Smith. I can't stand to lose these lawsuits. Uh, we have awful news, uh, Mr. Reisner. As you may have heard, that the guy was killed on the roller coaster. And now we got the guy whose genitals are burned with the coffee. Uh, Smith looking for advice over. The advice would be the dead guy, put him in the Disney wood chipper. <laughs> the guy with the uh, third degree burns, try to see if he'll not sue us for e-ticket rides. <laughs> and I love you. Bring me aloe. <laughs> and bad news, sir. Yes, Smith. The Cheech and Chong guy you like got arrested. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Put my... Uh, my delightful collection of glass bongs under the desk. <laughs> Thank you, Smith. Smith out. Goodbye, Eisner out. <laughs> I love you, sir. Not I. Not Aloe Smith. I what? don't want Aloe. What, sir? Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Very dark, sir. Very good, Smith. The love you, sir. I love you, Smith. <laughs> Smith out. Eyes are out. <laughs> the coffee pot fell off a tray carried at shoulder height by a waitress. The tourist lawyer says the trial showed that coffee's not supposed to be carried that way. Testimony showed that the tourist suffered extensive blistering as well as pigmentation changes to his genitals and groin from the overturned pot of coffee. Right, they F with his D. The, the award included $50,000 for future medical care and $100,000 to My his wife. My balls are coffee colored. 100000 $100, to his wife for loss of consortium. That means they can't do it anymore. I'm Buzz Burbank. Uh -huh. Don and Mike show on 106.7 WJMK. No! And that's it. We got to go. No! Over. Tomorrow, Greg. I don't know. But we know this. No matter what happens, we'll be here tomorrow on 106.7 WJFK. Fantastic. Thank you for listening, everybody. A good day to you, sir. 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 Day to you, sir. Okay. Consortium. <laughs> BM. Westwood. So we meet again. Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs>